Bayshore football clinic. Okay? It doesn't say Colorado basketball or Las Vegas basketball clinic on kind your of transcript because it would not be accepted. So I have to engage in some academics as well. So I wanted to count for you as a teacher <coughs> as well as a coach. So I'm real excited that we have this partnership with Nate and his company to allow you to do some of the things that he has going in regards to uh, college credit. So uh, I'm out at uh, the uh, uh, registration area. I've got a card. Nate will also have that posted on the website. And so you can contact me. I'm presently retired. I live in Steamboat Springs. And i uh, been doing this through CSU for about five years. And prior to that, Adams State College in Adams for about 30 years. So I've been doing this an awful long time. So my job is to help you. And I want you guys to all be successful. And, and make thanks for this opportunity. Thanks, Good. Hey, the other, then the other thing I wanted to, basically what it's going to boil down to, if you need like between one and four college credits, you're going to be able to get it through Dr. Rick by getting online, going through the end zone system, learning it, putting together a handbook, sending it off to Dr. Rick, and you guys can get continuing professional development. I've been wanting to do that for a couple of years, but we finally got to where we want to do that. So thanks, Coach. And we like Colorado State. Coach started at Colorado State, so there's, there's some ties there. So that's all good. We have to start winning some football games in Colorado State. We will. Coach, Coach Matt Bowling is going to get it going. Just a couple things before I turn it loose on, on end zone. Um, just a little bit about me. This is the only time I get to see guys' faces. And I want to just, just say I started the company two and a half years ago. Um, and a lot of it came out of my uh, Army career. And I, I was with soldiers. And I was with non-commissioned officers. I was with officers for 25 years and then retired and, and played football at West Point and just love and have a great passion for football, but really I have a much greater passion for helping develop uh, young men of integrity and also kind of mending older men and just being around guys. And so based on, um, based on a, a, you know, a, a little bit over a year in Iraq, leading a battalion of 802 infantry soldiers, and, and then leaving the Army, I was like, I'm going to do something that I, I want to do for the rest of my life. So my heart is, is helping high school football coaches. And beyond that, it's helping high school football players because I'm a huge believer in a lot of the issues that we deal with in this country um, are because we don't do a good enough job raising our boys. And so I'm all about teaching responsibility, um, teaching leadership in times of chaos and adversity, and acting justice on behalf of others and then making good decisions and reaping those rewards and then if you make poor decisions, managing and, and suffering through those, those consequences. And so that's kind of, the, that's kind of the, the genesis. I wrote a book called Warrior King and that, that year or so over in Iraq kind of changed my perspective on, on life. And so um, that's kind of the genesis of the company. And so I wanna, I think no, no high school football player should have to go 0 and 10. And I think it's such a formative time in their lives that they should have the skills. And so then I got on a football staff that was probably, that was one of the most disorganized, disorganized deals. I, I, I mean, I was in a bunch of firefights in Iraq and it was never that chaotic. I mean, the sideline was just craziness on a Friday night. And I was like, there's gotta be a better way to do this. And learn an offense, learn a defense, learn special teams. And so that's kind of where we, that's kind of where we started. Um, so, and then it worked for me when I was a, a head coach at a small school, using a system, turning a program around, and being very successful. So that's kind of where the whole model came from, and that's the genesis of it, and that's my heart. And so I went out and started looking for really good guys that I could do this with. And, and Noel was right up at the top. And, and, it's, and I always talk about how humble Noel is, and, and, he'll, and, and he's, a, he's a super fun guy. He's very humble, but he's a darn good football coach. And I think it's the next evolution of spread football to be quite honest with you. I'm an old triple option quarterback. We did it under center. I can't believe guys can do it now out of shotgun. They've got all that time to read everything in front of them. And so all of this run pass combination, <coughs> making two and three decisions with the quarterback pre-snap and post-snap, you know, is, is just the next evolution of how to run, how to run the spread offense. So Noel, you opened with Rice this year, didn't you? Yeah. On Thursday night. Okay, Liberty, my high school, we opened up with Doherty. And I will just never forget, so we get through our game, we win it, it's a great opener. I'm on the bus, riding, riding back to our high school, 
and Noel calls me from the locker room of the Rice game because I just didn't get a chance to see the game. And he's like, Nate, how did your game go? And I'm like, how cool is it that the UCLA offensive coordinator who just ran his first game at UCLA is in the locker room and he's calling me, asking me like, how did my high school do and how did we do in our first game of the season? And so that's, I think that story just kind of epitomizes what, what Noel's all about. He's just a really good football coach and he's a really good person. And, Thanks, Nate. And you're welcome, coach. I appreciate it. Because um, usually I'm calling Noel going, hey, what did you think? Or, you know, I'm not one of the guys that says, hey, you should have ran two, three man snag more. Yeah, when you got her ass, I guarantee I wouldn't have <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. So I'm going to turn it over. We're going to come. Exactly. Exactly. We're gonna like uh, we're gonna try and stay on a schedule, but I really want this to be more free flowing. So if we get into situations where guys need to ask questions, let's let's ask them. And I know there may be some that come in off the live stream too. So, coach, it's uh, it's kind of all yours. We're gonna start with like your philosophy and installation and practice for the first hour. <coughs> and we're gonna take some breaks. Are we gonna get a board? In here? And we are gonna get a board. In here. Let me go find out. Um, this is kind of cool. Yeah. I really don't know what the uh, I mean this is kind of for you guys so whatever I mean if this isn't a discussion this isn't a clinic right now to me this is a discussion there's a lot of guys like like coach here I mean I, I, I it made me a believer in it it's because you know you do stuff it's like well you know it's pretty cool but I don't know if it's really good shit or not you know, but he really, I went to his camp. We went and did a camp with his, his, at his place two years ago in, in Texas, and it's about 100 freaking 80 degrees on the turf. And he's running out with these kids, and I'm going, these guys, I mean, please don't let people know you're running this offense because cause you guys will, you guys stink. Well, I remember what you told us. Yeah. You throw the ball 70 times. Yeah, just for line up quick and throw it, man, because you got no chance with his guys. Um, but it's interesting because if you got guys that are kind of smart, they don't have to be really fat. Now, when you got the real fast guys and all that, we're all good. You can line up in whatever, right? I mean, you can line up in power eye. You can line up in wishbone. You can line up in – there's a million great offenses out there. But I, to me, I think it's a great equalizer for you. To be honest with you, our offensive line at UCLA this year stunk. Three freshmen, and they were, they were not very good. They're going to be good, but they're young, all right? And you, I go back and I look at the cut-ups to show you guys. I mean, I'm looking hard to, to find where we actually blocked everybody, you know, that we were supposed to block on these guys because it's just more like kind of hat for a hat, get in the way and let your other guys, you know, win the game for you. But um, so anything when you guys, whatever you want to talk about, I, I, I really do believe that. I mean, I grew up, started coaching right up uh, right in Fort Collins in 1982, actually 1981 at Boulder High School. Everything that I've learned or done, I've been sitting in rooms like this or visiting people or go watching football and all that kind of stuff. And I, I really believe this. And we get into this, well, it's, it's a secret. You know, I do is so special and all that kind of stuff. And, man, I don't want anybody to know. But that's how I learned football. And so I'm huge on, sh on sharing stuff. And, I, and also, and this is no lie, I, don't, I really don't do this to, you know, I wish I, I wish Nate would just, I'd be able to just, everybody could just have it and didn't cost anybody a freaking dime, really, all right? But there's obviously costs and all that kind of stuff on this, this. but I'm, op like you said, you want to call me, you got my phone number, my email, anytime, during the season, whenever, if I got time, I would love to talk to you guys about any questions you got or what you guys are doing cool that can make my football team better. I mean, I put on a kid from, uh, where's he from, Nate? Dadeville, Dadeville Alabama. Coach Brown. Yeah. Okay. This, kid's 25, this kid's 25 years old. This kid's 25 years old and put together a presentation of, um, of vertical pops and all this kind of stuff. And he put the cut-ups, he put the drawings and all this kind of stuff up there, and he, and he emails it to me, and I'm putting it on, I'm going, this shit is freaking awesome, man. This is cool stuff. And so I think it's important if you guys, and I know you might play each other or you're in the same district or whatever, but I think it's cool if you guys share with each other. 
you know, information, man. Hey, we're doing this, but look what I did, man. I'm, I'm coaching my guy this way on how to do it. Or, man, we're calling it this way, and then we did this over here. All right? And the more you guys can share all that stuff, I think it's pretty cool. So, I don't know, I'm kind of lost on where you want to start here, Nate. What do you want to, huh? Okay, so I'm going to give you some new thought. I'm going to give you some new thoughts I've got on all this stuff. Okay, whether it works or not, I have no idea. This is, this is awesome. If this was a chalkboard, it'd even be better, wouldn't it? You know, freaking chalk's flying, and you, and you walk out here, it'll be all white, and all that kind of stuff. But, so now that Chip Kelly, okay, Chip Kelly is gone, because Chip, Chip used to come with Chip, when Chip was at Northeast Louisiana, uh, North, uh, New Hampshire, I'm sorry, Northeast Louisiana, at New Hampshire, he, he used to come down all the time and, and spend time with me. I was at Auburn, he was at New Hampshire, and he and, and Joe Gilbert, who's now the old line coach at the Colts, they would get in the car and drive down to Auburn and spend a week with me, and we'd drink beer and talk ball and all that kind of stuff. So he gets the head when he gets a head job at Oregon. This is how smart I am, all right? I'm the I'm the head coach at Panther Creek, not the head coach. I'm the offensive coordinator at Panther Creek High School. I'm at the Jets. We get fired. I don't want to go to freaking Cleveland, so I go to coach at Panther Creek High School in, in Cary, North Carolina, because my daughter is going to school. And my son's playing there, so I get to watch him, which I've never had no chance to watch him. I'm sitting in an airport. I can remember because I was flying back to the Jets to do something there. Chip gets the head job at Oregon and calls me. He says, he goes, hey, Noel, I just, I'm getting the job. You want to come be my offensive coordinator at Oregon? I'm like, well, you're going to call the plays. I don't want to come there. All right? He goes, yeah, but, you know, in a couple of years, I'll, you, you can call it. But, you know, I want you to coach quarterbacks, do all this stuff. I go, Nah, I'm not going to go to Oregon. I'll stay at Panther Creek High School, all right? Now, if I'd have known that now, all right, because the guy who did take the job is now the head coach at Oregon, right? I would have probably gone. But, uh, but now that he's at Philly, I've had a chance to, you know, now I can call and talk to him, right? Because we wouldn't share ideas, obviously, because we're in the same league. And uh, so, like, some of the stuff he does is really cool, all right? And one of the things is, and two things, one is, like, Oklahoma State, this whole school comes from, like, Kevin Summon and I kind of grew up together, Dana Holgerson, Mike Leach, Sonny Dykes, you know, and Chip and myself. That's kind of the guy. We're kind of guys who kind of known each other for a long time and started doing this back in the, in the 90s, late 90s. All right. And um, Oak State does a nice job. What Dana does, same thing with Summy, you know, down at Texas A&M. But... I can't emphasize enough the, the tempo you, I mean, I'll keep pushing the envelope of tempo. It's such an equalizer in this whole thing, all right? And if you think you're playing fast, figure out ways to play faster, all right? So I'm talking to Chip uh, um, about a week ago about it. And so his, his thing was even by quarters, all right? So at the, if you want to be simple, break, break the game down as in, in your brain and your players' brains into as small as segments as you can. So this is, the, I'm a, and this is the one I'm going to start thinking about and messing around with, where he even, as he, on his call sheet, all right, he goes second, third, fourth. So you know how we break installation. He even breaks his game plan down by quarters where here's my six plays, I'm running in the first quarter, all right? And it may be all 10 and 20 personnel. Now he comes back in the second quarter, same plays, all right? But now it might be all 11 and 21 personnel. Here's my six plays that I'm going to run, okay? Now in the third quarter, it may be, you know, a combination of these two, but here's my six plays. And then that's how you practice them all week. So as you break up your team period and you're going to go, you know, versus your scout team, your kids know, hey, it's 10 and 20 personnel. We, these six, man, that's, your, that's the kid's game plan. We can run these as fast as we can. Bam, bam, bam. And all of a sudden, and if you ever watch Oregon play, you, you, if you really look at it, you'll see that all of a sudden, from week to week, uh, just a new, you know, might be unbalanced. Well, we're not an unbalanced team, but this may be, shoot, in third quarter, all of a sudden, you've been going along, and all of a sudden, bam, here comes your six unbalanced plays. And, you're, and it's, still, it's still running the same exact co uh, concepts, but it's unbalanced. And now your key screen's here. Attach the tight end to this side. You know, run the Zorro. Still ha attach your key, your key screen out there, but it's unbalanced. Now the defense, I mean, they got to make adjustments. 
So I thought that was pretty cool. That's one, one thing that I'm going to work on this spring. So if you guys get a chance, like I said, if you guys, whenever you want to come to our place, you're more than welcome to come. All right. The other thing is I'm going to cut down, all right, and I know on my installation, if we look at now, I'm going to cut down the concepts that I put in on installation. Okay, so I'm even going to even simplify it even more this year. Instead of putting four pass concepts in an installation, I'm going to put two pass co concepts in, all right, and I'm going to up the presentation of the concept. So instead of like four pass concepts and then going, you know, at a dual and trio, I might go, I'm going to go two pass concepts and start building it into 11, 21, all right? So different look for the defense, I think. Same plays, different look, all right? This is, uh, let me see if I can get this, this over here, all right? So the, the, whole, the whole philosophy, and, and here's what's going to happen. Some guys have been running this, like coach over there for two years. Some of you guys maybe are just now going to start to run it. So everybody's at a little bit different level. All right, some of this may be redundant stuff. All right, some of you guys, if you got questions, like we need to ask and discuss this thing as we're going through this. All right, as far as installation, you know where it all starts from. Um, I'm really, I'm a really firm, firm believer is when you present to your guys. Okay, I got, I've got, and it may be one of the guys on your coach, or one of the guys on your staff. You know, I happen to have a couple of GAs. All right, but I'm always trying every installation or every meeting I'm with my players. I try to send a message that's not always just about football. You know, maybe it's about attitude. Maybe it's about being, you know, dare to be the uncommon guy. Maybe it's about, uh, um, you know, something Vince Lombardi said, or you know, um, uh, are you the same guy every day? You know, a little bit of a message. And the, and the thing is, with the, with the huddle now, you can PowerPoint this stuff. I'm going to pull one up in a second and just show you, like, install one at UCLA. All right? But I PowerPoint all those thoughts I put down during the year. All right? How am I presenting, to, how am I presenting this stuff to my players? Okay? Because life is about pre presentation. It really is. How do, you, how do they think or how are you hitting their brains with the information you're giving them? All right? So that if I can bring it, we learn in 45-minute segments. Okay, after about 45 minutes with anybody, you're thinking about other shit, okay? So you want to come in, hey, here's, here's, here's my point I'm trying to make, guys. Here's the six plays I'm putting in, okay? Here's what's important to these plays. Here's how I'm going to call them, however you do it. But I put a presentation for the whole group every day, uh, whenever there's an install on it. Because I think attitude is huge. All right, and I talked about this. I know some of you guys were in the talk yesterday, but I, but... You know, something like I said, it's going to be like, well, he's just talking, saying the same shit. Well, it is the same shit. It's the same plays, right? You know, just keep over and over again. But I think how, how you practice with your guys, how you, in, I'm sorry, how you install, how you practice, and then how do you coach, okay? Ask those questions every day, all right? I'm getting ready for spring ball. It's all I've been thinking about since signing date's over, okay? How can I be unique? How can I make it interesting? How can I install to these kids, all right, to get my point across? How am I, go how am I going to practice with these guys? It may be different. It may be, you know, uh, however you want to set it up, okay? And then how am I going to coach these guys? Because if I want them to be uncommon and I want them to be the, the same guy every day, then I got to be uncommon. I got to be the same guy every day. This is, I don't know if Nate's in here, this is the philosophy part of this whole thing, right? Okay, all right. So, you know, to me, those things are, are not, are, are, are overlooked. We, some don't, let's, let's don't get so caught up into, um, I wish I, I've got, I know you guys all have it, right? You guys have all sat there on Monday night football, all right? And you're looking, you just saw a play and you're saying, and you're hoping they replay it and you're grabbing a pen and a piece of paper and trying to draw, you know, God, did you see that play they ran? So we get so much caught up, and I got, we all got binders of freaking plays we've drawn up from, other, from different offenses, different guys, watching games here, watching games there, all right? And that's all good stuff. There's a ton of great stuff in there. But to me, that's what makes you a good football team, all right? Players, you know, people, all that kind of stuff. How are they going to practice, man? How do I want to do all that? All right? Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of bouncing around here right now. So <clears throat> as... as, as as we did a, a pretty cool thing, and 
and Nate would, and this came from my son actually, all right, and it started at Arizona State, all right. But I, but I know you guys have all watched the series or read the book, all right. You know, we are going to war, you know, the band of brothers, all right. So that was like our big thing, okay. So he comes up and he says, well, we made a band of brothers contract with our guys, okay. And we had the picture, the picture of the Army guy standing there. To, and, and I'll pull it up here in a second and, and show you guys. But a band of brothers. And then, then he... And then Taylor wrote like a contract, all right? And it comes from, um, it actually comes from the SEAL team thing about, I know, I'll find it and, and hopefully we can re read it on there, all right? But about, it, it, it fits football perfect. And then, so the first install, we handed that out to everybody and each kid had to sign it, okay? And then as the practices went on, you, every slide at each practice is I would pull up the Band of Brothers slide, all right? Did you practice, did you fit all these criteria in the Band of Brothers, being in the Band of Brothers, and I'd have Band of Brothers, and I'd put, hey, Joey Jones, you made it, uh, Johnson, you made it, all right? And we start, and so you start to, we started to build, if you were in the Band of Brothers, all right, your name got up on the board. And I'm going to tell you, bro, all right, you're on the Band of Brothers today, but if tomorrow, the way you practice, I don't want your ass in my foxhole, I'm gonna, you're not on the Band of Brothers anymore, all right? So it became, well, we were doing that, and if you look now at UCLA, Coach Moore grabbed it, and that's, like that's kind of like the cornerstone of we built, he, we built the program on um, when Coach Moore first got there, okay? And we've all got our little deals, but I think that stuff's kind of, kids love shit like that, man. They love being, you know, I don't know what the word is that I'm looking for. Part of a cause, you know, the teamwork, all that kind of stuff, okay? Is that where the, the Riverside deal came in? You guys switched to uh, uh, practice instead of school, you guys moved out? The whole thing when, he, when we went in there, and obviously true or not true, but we had, you know, I always talk about this, right? You, ha you don't inherit an attitude. So what, what everybody said about UCLA, and when I coached at Arizona State or any place, what was always said about UCLA players? Soft, beach boys, surfers, all right? When it gets tough in the game, they're freaking going to fold, all right? They, they, you know, not a tough group. So the whole thing about, hey, we, you don't, we didn't, you didn't, we, we didn't, it's not like I inherited that attitude, that's who I'm going to be. You create the attitude. So that was the whole thing. We put them all on buses, took them to San Bernardino, right? And it was freaking hot. I mean, and he, all these cool things that Coach Mora did was awesome, you know. The rope thing, we had to climb, each guy had to grab a part of the rope, and we had to, it was 180 degrees, and coaches, everybody had to grab the rope and, and climb this mountain, you know. And you couldn't let, if you couldn't let anybody on your team let go of the rope. So it was all things like that to try to instill that, to kind of create the attitude. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull, pull up this install and see if, see if I can find it here real quick. All right, so anyway, and, we're, and, and I'll pull some of this stuff up here because we're going to be here for a while, all right? And then we can kind of, give you some ideas on that all right but 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 so that's the attitude part of it do you have a game plan I know all you guys know football I know all you guys can coach an old lineman or coach a receiver or coach a quarterback um, you know all that kind of stuff but do you have a game plan for what the attitude of your football team is going to be all right and our attitude is is we're going to play fast and then play as fast as we can. We're going to play the next play. We're going to fix the problems and then call another play. You guys have heard all that stuff before. All right, so let's go. Let me pull it up real quick, see if I can find one. Uh, there might be one in here. Ah, yes. Oh, they love it when you put shit like that up there, too. Let's see. If 
fact, there's the picture of it, okay? The Band of Brothers type deal. Now, our, our whole, you see this down here, this Band of Brothers. That's where it all started. Arizona State, we started it. And then uh, I think I'll, I'll find the contract and all that in case any of you guys. And I'll send any of this stuff to you that – but, um, or, well, I tell you what, I'll get Nate any of this stuff. I'm giving him all this stuff when we're done here. It, we're supposed to be up before this, guys, but, ah, but um, our cut-ups, we, they, they redid the software, Huddle, redid the software, and so our cut-ups were, about, were a little bit late, so it's all getting done um, just now. But everything I got on here, I'll put. So this, uh, just as an example, okay? This, is, this was install one for my guys, all right? And this was all done just off on Huddle, PowerPoint. You can add your cut-ups in there, okay? But all this stuff I'm trying to sell to, the same stuff we talk about. But I talk to my guys the same way, all right? So as, a kid, as the kids went, they knew, all right, well, we're going to learn this stuff because we don't install formations. They have to know all the formations. They're always in, okay? Motions are always in. It's not like today we're only putting in dual, tomorrow we're putting in trio, Okay, and then as we put in, this is just out of, the, out of the sheet, and now it's, okay, here's 90, here's a cut up. But this, I think this is a great tool, all right, great tool for you to have, all right, in huddle. So you go through all 90s, now here's 95, et cetera. And I'll, I'll find this stuff in a second, guys, all right. But anyway, so let's go back. So what, where do you guys think, where do you guys all want to start? Anything? Football-wise, come on, somebody give me something. Establish tempo. How do you start off if you've never been in a full, a full speed tempo? Great question. Okay. And I'm going to give you guys a bunch of background on this. Okay. But we went and we're pretty, we were pretty, every year we're pretty, we're pretty even. And I don't know if Coach, you found the same thing. But in the fourth quarter, we always, we, every game, just about every game is we're going to, we outscore our opponents two to one. All right, because they're about dead by then. Okay, well, if you're gonna play, if you're gonna play at a tempo, you ha everything you do in life has to be at that tempo. All right. So the whole selling point to my guys is when you go to class, you go to tempo. All right. You go, you got a hot date, you go with tempo. All right. You're gonna go get a milkshake, you go with tempo. You're taking the you're taking the the garbage out for mom. All right. You take it out with freaking tempo. All right. So you you put that mindset in in the guys. Also, when we hit the practice field, I mean, our practice is an hour and 35 minutes long, okay? I think Drew over there, I think he does his, what, 50 minutes of offense. Because I know, in, 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 especially in high school, you got a lot of guys that have to play both sides of the football, okay? In special teams, okay? Now you're asking your guy to play offense, defense, special teams, and then go as fast as they can go, okay? What it's going to make you do as a coach, and whether you believe it or not, is that second group of guys, all right, that maybe aren't very fast or maybe aren't very big, all right, the little Joeys and Johnnies who would just most, if you weren't a tempo team or whatever, that spend the whole game kind of standing on the sideline watching the game, those guys have to be part of your football team, okay? They got to get on the field, all right? And you never know what happens with those guys. It's that guy that, well, you don't think he's a good enough player, and all of a sudden he's getting his opportunities. And I tell you what, those guys bust their ass for you a hell of a lot harder most of the time than that All-American stud kid you got. So everybody, to me, everybody's involved. And they're involved from the time they step. And I'm just going to kind of go through step by step, I guess, kind of the whole thing, all right? Some of it you guys will bore the shit out of you. Some of it might help, okay? But as soon as, as, soon as they start, if our practice, let's say, started at 7 a.m., Okay, and we've got, a, uh, we've got a little gate at UCLA. So here's our practice fields. Okay. Okay, remember, we're, tr we're trying to play with tempo. We're trying to sell all these points, okay? Our group, no, nobody, comes, nobody comes out on Band of Brothers, man. When nobody comes on a football field, all right, by themselves. Okay, so it's not like, all right, we've got to start at 7, so at, at, at at 6.45, two receivers kind of walked out, and they're out there dicking around playing catch. And, oh, here comes a quarterback. And you know how kids are. 
you know. And, you know, the kind of guys kind of come off. And then at 7 o'clock, you blow the whistle, and now we start, okay? Uh-uh, all right? No, no receivers going on that field until every freaking receiver's band of brethren and up right there, okay? And when they take the field, they're in tempo. So they do whatever they do, you know, and, and how our guys work it, like if this, was, if this was the receivers or the running backs and even the quarterbacks, they know it practices at seven, all right? And I don't even have to tell them anymore. I mean, they, they just do it, okay? You know, after you coach them up, this is what I expect, okay? They'll all huddle up, make sure they're all together, their little chant, whatever the hell they, they do, all right? And they hit here and they're moving. Now they may go over here and I say, you got four, four, 15 minutes to warm your arms up. Okay, now give them a program to what you want them to do for that 15 minutes. Okay, I want to sell as much ownership, all right, in this football team to my players as I can. All right, they got to own it, man. You got, this is your offense. It ain't my offense. I don't get to take one freaking snap. All right, I don't. And guess what? If you guys suck, they may fire me, but I'll go find another job. All right, this is your football team. So like I said, the whole attitude thing, you got, we, we, whatever you can do to sell that to them, all right? So we stay, we start at seven, whenever you, whenever your position coach or whatever, all right, they hit the field, they come up and do like, they do their little drills or whatever. Then at seven o'clock, the whistle blows and we stretch. Okay, well, I don't deal with that. That's the strength guy, okay? Then we do the special teams, okay? Well, that's the special teams coach, okay? That's already scripted and carded. All right, and it's all already routined out, so it may take a week or two. All right, I'm talking like more to head coaches or guys who are special teams, but if there's a plan on special teams, or do you just making shit up out there, or or do you know on every Tuesday special teams? All right, I run this punt drill, I run punt, and I run hang hang middle. Okay, bam, here's the drills, here's what they do every Tuesday. It's the same for these guys. Okay? So when the whistle blows, like Coach Mora, when the whistle blows and we're moving from, from, um, from drill to drill, all right, we're doing it with tempo. So the, but you guys know how it is. I hate it when you spend half your time, ex, your coaches are explaining the drill, right, or guys are just kind of, okay, well, we're going to go punt. Oh, uh, let's go skelly, all right? The head man's chewing somebody's ass. If, I mean, he's blowing the whistle and he's fucking sending everybody off, back off the field, and he says, we're starting it all over, okay? So when everybody knows the horn blows or whatever, and we're going, to, we're going to punt, and I may have a backup quarterback that's on punt, and he's over here, and he'd been warming up, and he knows it's punt. He's sprinting over here, and, and the drill's set up, the bags are set up, and it starts, okay? So, so from right there, okay, from there, now we say, okay, we're going to go offense, Okay, we start every practice, and the kids know it, every practice with a team takeoff to set the tempo. So I'm just going to go step by step what a practice is like for us, okay, because I love how we practice. We get so much done in an hour, in an hour and a half. I mean, it's done. And, our, and our, our kids, I mean, they buy into it, man. I mean, they, they're yelling at each other, and let's get going, all right. So if here's your offensive field, and here's the end zone, all right, and there's a 10-yard line. Okay, and the old lineman may be all down here doing some drills because we're in special teams or, or you know, quarterbacks. You know, I'm usually over here working with the quarterbacks. Everybody's like waiting for the horn. All right, as soon as it does, there's a ball sitting on this hash. All right, and team takeoff starts. All right, so we all get the team takeoff, and that's when I'm going to work screens. All right, so your screens. Your screens on this, and I'm going to. I'm going to just get a practice plan up here. I don't know if I got one on here. Okay, so your screens, you can kind of see it right here. So here it is. All right. Now, as a coach, okay, as a coach, we spend a lot of time, not a lot of time, but walk, walk and I don't know how applicable that is to you guys, all right, but walkthroughs, okay. So as much as I can sit in a room and tell guys, all right, I get a lot more done. So here's, here's a, uh, and I don't know what the example, this I think was for you guys, 
all right, or someplace we went, all right. So we'd say, okay, well, let's go out. I'm going to just, instead of meeting with my group, we're going to have a walkthrough today. We're going to walk through the team script. So, or you can meet, whatever you want to do. Stretch, all right, special teams. So right there, team takeoff, okay. Well, those are the screens that are getting called. That's the only screens that are going to get called today and team, all right. So it's Green Tear, Linda, Comet, all right. It's dual right, F quick, Linda, Comet, key three, same thing. Okay, these two are really the same plays, one out of 20, one out of 10, all right? And then it's green free, all right? So we know, we know our screens today are, we're going to run, well, run one out of 20, all right? Well, I want to run an under screen over here, all right? And I want to run one out of free, one out of tear, okay? And then one out of 10 personnel with F quick. But it's all under screen, all right? And I'm all building this over here with Comet, or nowadays, that's an old script. Nowadays, it's more Chevron over here, all right? And, I, and, some, and some of the guys, you got you to gotta stop. And I think this is a great opportunity. I think how this thing's got to go today, it takes me a while. I'm old, all right? Takes me a while to kind of get the juices flowing. We'll get a little get going here. But I think this is where you got to stop and say, what the fuck is Linda? All right? How do you coach that? I think we just got to go and if you got a question, we got to ask it. Coach, you take off against there? Yeah. Like well, offensive pursuit. Kind of, I mean, offense, it's defensive mentality. Gotcha. Defensive mentality. Okay? It was kind of like last night, to be honest with you. I'm at the Bellagio. Okay? It's 3.30 a.m. All right? I'm winning some money. And some guy sits down next to me, okay, and three, into three hands. In fact, I'd still probably be over there, all right? But that some bitch split tens. Never split tens, right? Okay? So now it's time for me to tempo out of there, right? <laughs> I'm going to go get at least an hour of sleep so I can, we can talk today, okay? But, uh, but let's ask questions about, like, what's happening, okay? Actually practicing your signals at that, that time, or are you mm -mm. just yelling out the play? No, -uh. it goes like it's, it, it is, like Coach says, the sideline during the game, all right? It's, it's like, it's like um, controlled confusion at this time. This is when the coaches vent, all right? This is when we get a yell at them. This is when, because we're right there, so it'll look just like, it'll be just like this, all right? Team takeoff. Here comes the O-line, and they hate, the O-line hates this drill. Okay, they always coach. Can we just do something else? No, all right, this is what we're going to do. And so we set it up like this. Okay, and this is my favorite drill. There's a, there's a ten yard line. There's your hashes. All right, manager comes and says, "All right, what hash we want to start off today? Let's start at left hash." Okay, so as soon as they hear team takeoff, I'm already yelling to play. All right, the quarterbacks are yelling it. All right, twenty, 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 twenty. Green, 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 green. All right. I'm, and like I'll tell the quarterbacks, I'll say, give me green tear, Chevron Linda, all right? So he's 20, 20, green, 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 green. Hey, Chevron, 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 all right? Here we go, Linda, 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 tear, 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 all right? Bam, ball's gone. And as coaches, all right, this is a time we're like trying to put the gas in the tank, all right? We're trying to get the high energy. Guys are running all over. There's like five footballs in the air at this point, okay? The other backup quarterbacks. If I was going to run, if, we, if that was the play, two quarterbacks, all right? Two quarterbacks jump up. The other kid jumps up right there, right, ne right next to him. He's taking the snap. He just called the play. I'll jump up there with him. He's throwing the Linda. I'm throwing the Chevron, all right? Said hike. Maybe he teared him. Linda here, all right? Working on signals. This guy will come throw that guy. The other quarterback will be standing back here. He'll throw this guy. There'll be a quarterback. You know, I don't know if you got that many quarterbacks. Sometimes it's the coach, the running back coach. He's throwing the swing. So all three of these guys just caught a ball. He's doing that. All right. This is the time when the only thing we need in the drill is a football, and we use four pop-up dummies. We put a pop-up dummy two yards deep. If here was the numbers, let me clean this picture up for you guys. All right. But you. You see, we start talking. See, I'm conditioned. You start, we start talking about team takeoffs. You see, all of a sudden, I started getting urgency in my life. That's what I want. 
you know, this is how we do it, you know, all right? And so, uh, so if this was the hash, here's the 10-yard line, okay? Here's the end zone, all right? Here's the numbers, okay? We put a pop-up dummy right here over top of this receiver, about two yards deep on the sidewalk, okay? On the sidewalk is between the bottom edge of the numbers and the out of bounds. We put another one here, then we put, here's the hashes, okay? Here's the hashes, then we put another one about six, seven yards deep in the alley, okay? So those are the sidewalks, those are the alleys, and these are also, for the quarterback, the conflict guys, your Mike, your Sam, and your Will, okay? So if I was green, right, and I was running Chevron, okay, that's, that's who he's, right, running the snag off of, okay? <coughs> All right, he knows I got Linda, he has to outside release, and I used to do it with seven pop-ups, all right, but it just it took too long, you know, and then it took too long because the special teams might be using that part of the field, and then they, I had to have like 25 managers run guys. If I had like real little light things, I'd, I'd, put, I'd put here, here, two safeties on the hash like that, and a mic. I'd put all, all set. That would be like the perfect world to me. Okay, but we just say screw it, put a guy in a sidewalk guy. So that's what the drill looks like. Those four bags, they jump up, okay? Quarterback's going green, 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 green. Hey, Chevron, Chevron. Hey, Linda, Linda, Linda. All right, tear, okay? Ready, boom, there goes the motion. Set hike, okay? Now, this is a good time for your quarterbacks, for you guys coaching quarterbacks, all right? Is it, now, we're, let's start training their eyes. So as both these guys take the, take the, as the ball gets snapped, both of these guys, come and they set and they look right at the snag, okay? Well, this guy throws the snag, bam, okay? Well, I don't want these cats running and not catching a football because we, catch, we want to catch as many as we can, all right, as he goes. So my other quarterbacks are standing back here, all right, or running back coach or whoever, and one's going to do the same thing. He's going to go one, two, three, hitch, and he's going to throw the corner out. He's the, this guy over here is going to be probably standing back there. He's going to go one, two, three, hitch, hitch, and he's going to throw that. So they're going through the Chevron reads, okay? Over here, he's told these guys, Linda, he knows he's got deep half, deep third. Mandatory outside release, okay? And that's how I liked it when we had the other pops up. He'd do that and go in and try to block the guy, okay? But anyway. Where's the next unit at? Huh? The next unit that's coming on. Say, for instance, like you just said, you could Quarterback came out, you guys start running the play. What about the little Johnnies that are standing around? Well, you guys probably don't have no little Johnnies. We yeah, we do. I got a shitload of little Johnnies, all right? Okay? All right? Everybody is, uh, the whole rest of the team, the whole rest of the offense, coaches, a lot of times the coaches are out here. No, I'm talking about the next group. Hold on, hold on. I'm getting there, okay? Relax, okay? I'm getting there. I'm getting there, okay? So I'm saying, coaches, everybody else is standing back here, okay? As soon as that ball is released, all right, all these guys, the rule of the law is all 11 of you guys, if you have enough quarterbacks, quarterbacks included, all right, the, only, the guy who is running the play, the real quarterback, not these other guys, they all finish through there, okay? As they're gone, the next group runs the same exact play, and they jump up, okay? And it's like... Guys are running all over the place. You're yelling and screaming, I need a freaking F, I need an F. It's F quick. So, I mean, you're trying to put urgency in these kids' life and go as fast as you can. So basically we could change the entire personnel, maybe just with the exception of the quarterbacks, maybe just slide the quarterbacks over to a different. Well, this is how I do it, all right? So say today it's green tear, green free, and dual F quick. So those are the three I'm hitting on that first on the left hash, okay? So I'm going... I'm just telling the quarterback, hey, give me green tear, give me a Chevron Linda. All right, boom, the two groups do it, okay? And when that, when that second group finishes, the first group has been jogged back, and they know they get right back on the ball, okay? I mean, and we're, I mean this is when we're really screaming at them. Yeah, I, it's like, hurry up, hurry up. So once the second group runs there, I've already got the quarterback, I say, this time give me green free. All right, and he'll come up and go, green, 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 green. Hey, free, 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 Chevron. All right, Linda, Linda, Linda. Okay, ready, set hike, boom. It goes again for two groups, okay? Now I'll say, all right, give me 10 personnel, run dual F quick. All right, run Chevron. So it's the same play, 
All right, now he'll, he'll yell, hey, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, dual right, dual right, dual right, dual right. Here we go, hey, F quick, F quick, Chevron, Linda. All right, Linda, 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 ready, set hike. So that gets run, okay? So those are only three, the three, only three screens my guys are going to run all day in practice, okay? After, now I'm trying to get all this done in five minutes, okay? So once, so that's what? If I did that in two groups, that's six plays, okay? So six plays, now I'll say, right hash, right hash, right hash. Say, I'll run over here in the right hash. You go, blue, 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 blue. I mean, this is about how, you know, and you, I'm like, I'm running around and yelling at the guys just like that. Blue, 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 blue. Hey, let's go, tear, tear, tear. Hey, rose, 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 rose. Chevron, ready. Boom, set hike, you know. And, and now we do all six plays on that hash, okay? And, I, and then I'll keep going now. If I had a reverse or something in that week, all right, in the middle of something, I may just pop that on them, okay? You know what I mean? So, like, maybe our reverse is, is, uh, is green. And we're going to go travel, all right? We're going to go travel, and we're going to go Rambo, all right? Off of Zorro, odd, all right? So at some point in there, I might just say, hey, green, 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 green. Hey, go travel Rambo, travel Rambo, all right? So the kids are... And they're having to think, and they're having to line up, and they're going to have to, we're having to snap the football. Okay? So, does that make sense to you guys? It's a great period. So what, Coach, what's your goal? I mean, like, you said six from the left half, six from the right half. But you want the quarterback to throw both the snag, both the under to the back. I mean, are you looking for a certain amount of throws the quarterback to each route? No, I'm not worried about, to be honest with you, I don't, I don't even really pay attention except my starting quarterback is with the first group, and I'm telling him what play. I never even tell the second quarterback what the play is because he should be standing back there, or he hears it, and he knows I'm the second quarterback. I just threw Chevron. Okay, here comes the second group. I know I'm going green, 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 tear. Hey, Chevron, now I'm the quarterback, okay? I know now I'm throwing to Linda, okay? And the third quarterback jumps up there, and he's got this, you know? Or your fourth quarterback, if you got that many, you're – Freshman kid, all right? I, the, to me, they all roll, th roll through. I don't really say, make sure, all I know is that my starting quarterback takes the first play with the first group of each, so he, get, he runs each one from each hash. Then they just roll through. Is that what you're yeah. asking? Yeah. They're doing just like this. That's why I said they hate it. Because they freaking get... They get tired, man, all right? And that, and that kid that just ran the sidewalk, all right? And what, I, what, what we're looking for on that is all these are angle of departure landmarks for our guys. So he knows he's a sidewalk guy on Linda. He, he'll go, and there's no defense, okay? I mean, I've done it too before where I've taken scout guys and made them the down four guys and all that stuff. It's just, it's, you know, he ain't getting away, and then the guy doesn't rush hard enough, and he's standing right, you know, Screw it. So they're just working their – this is when, the, when, when you're really getting the O-line coaches, really getting the coaches guys right after a, a play or during a play, all right? And then so he should be, hey, two kicks, punch, and now he's working on his angle, all right, at the sidewalk right there. Okay, and then what – these are pop-ups because this is we're trying to teach our linemen, okay? Our linemen is – you never stop at the bag as we teach you to run through the bag, okay? So he should never actually break stride. He should run over the bag, bam, all right? Never stop his feet and then finish in the end zone. Then he's jogging back and he's going, oh, fuck, I got another one, all right? Oh, they, and they hate it, all right? And, I mean, it's funny because there'll be guys, you know, I don't really notice who's in there. All I know is I'm going fast, and there might be that fourth team – left guard, all right, and this guy's getting tired, and he ain't back in time, and this kid is like, can he jump your ass, you know, give me a guard, it could be anybody, all right, they jump in there, but everybody's involved, there's nobody that ever stands around, it's not just for you guys, it's the whole, it's everybody on your offense. Here's what we do in this, defense is down to a defensive pursuit drill, that's offensive pursuit drill screen period, okay. Linemen have sandbags, okay, which makes it even tougher on them. They hate it. They're about ready to cuss us out. We get lots of reps, short period of time. Number one quarterback, I want him working screen. I 
I got concept period, okay? It's a little bit different for us. You know, Noel does a little bit. Concept period, seven on seven. I'm going to get him lots of reps. I want him working Linda, Rose, okay? I want the back. We actually work from the 30 going in, okay? So, I mean, our guys are dead tired, five, ten minutes, and we're getting some conditioning in, getting our screen period in. We're ready to go. So, you know, I mean, the sandbag, I like the sandbag idea because they got some, you know, they got some, some punch action going on, and, and, and the, the guys getting to the sidewalk in the alley, I mean, we, it's t tough in high school to get those guys trained to block those guys. So we rep the heck out of it three, four days a week. Screen's been good for you? Excellent for us. Yeah. And, what, and the main thing is what you want is you want freaking go fast. Go fast. Communicate a play, snap it, go fast, know where you're going, right? So, yeah, so I'd say, I, see, I think that's cool stuff is that if you guys are doing, some of you guys have been running and you're doing it different ways. Like I said, this isn't like, you, you know, this is an offense where this is how you do it. If you don't do it this way, you're fucked up, okay? It's like, know what you're trying to accomplish with the drill and then modify however you want to do it, okay? So, so there's that point, okay? From right there when the, horn, when the whistle blows or that five-minute period is over, all right, it goes right to pat and go, okay? And like... You said that Friday night. This practice schedule, like, it's even shorter now at UCLA. Yeah, than this one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is like, uh, I think I did this one... I don't, I don't know what for, for what period for what, um, but this isn't far off. Okay. This isn't far off. You know, I think Jim cut this down to, to 15, uh, 15 minutes or twenty minutes. Um, this this uh, period. This is pretty close. I don't know how many how many minutes that is. Because you know we're talking plays, not minutes. Yeah. So so these plays probably got knocked down a little yeah. bit. You know. So I mean, when our twenty plays is up, we're done. Yeah. I mean, we go run 20 plays as fast as we can, and we don't repeat any. And then we go the, and then we go the next one, okay? A lot of times, too, I'm waiting for, for the defensive guys because they're, they're on the same thing. They got 20 plays, but defensive guys like, like, love to repeat shit, okay? So we'll be done, all right? And if we're done, all right, what, I, what, what, what I'll always do is I always script a few more than what the defense is because I go, always go faster than the defense. And if we have downtime, all right, hey, Take your hats off, man. Get some water. All right, catch your breath. All right, because we're fixing to go into team, open and third down. Okay, and when the head man starts it, bam, we're we're going. All right, um, pat and go. So then we're right here, and I don't know if you, if you guys are doing this stuff through. This is just how I do it. Only way. So I don't know. There's a lot of better, better ways to do it. So we just finished that. O line leaves. They go to individual, and they're going to be ready to go here in a few minutes and work the last 10 minutes right here, all right, of the runs for that day with the running backs and the whys, okay? But anyway, we go to pat and go, and pat and go always starts at the 40. So as soon as team takeoff is going, everybody's going, all right, pat and go, pat and go. They All the kids take off, they even up the lines, and it's everybody, and every skilled kid is right there then all your quarterbacks, all right? And we're throwing just pat and go, okay? Now, so I think it's good to just talk some coaching points on this. And I know you guys, the big, big thing we try to, t that, that Coach Yarbs is doing is two things. One is to hold the line, okay? So whatever, if there's, whatever their split is, okay? Usually it's outside the edge of the numbers. As they release, all right? And we're just going, you know, pat and go is he's telling those guys to hold the line. Okay, that's huge. Hold the line right there because the first thing you're going to see is when you guys throw pat and go, and I know you guys know all this shit, but anyway, is when you put a line of guys out there, half of them are going to, are going to run the, the, the pat and go route like this. All right? And they're going to catch it here. Okay? Well, we're really trying them to learn about a couple things here, and that is, all right, to be able to locate the football, okay? So as they come off, 
They're going to go through 10 yards, all right, without looking. Then they're going to get their eyes to the sky. They're going to, try to, they're going to hold the line. They're going to try to catch it over their outside shoulder, okay? And they're going to try to run through the ball. So those are, all, those are the coaching points that Yarbs and Butters and those guys are, t- are we're trying to get them. That means running backs, tight ends, everybody, okay? So they pat and go it, all right? Quarterbacks, okay? What I'm working on you right now is the same thing we always do is your eyes. So he, we never throw pat and go where it's like, okay, he takes it, he takes it, he sets, and you know, one time I'll tell him just catch it, set, eyes here, get your eyes outside, make the throw, hey, throw a couple back shoulders this time, Brett, okay, boom, back shoulder, okay, hey, this time though I want you to hitch to it, you know, hitch, hitch, bam, let it go, all right, so things that really happen to him in the game when he's having to throw a go route, okay. What's big in this period is burst, okay, and finish. So we're trying to train our guys that it's, a, a, it's an unconscious reaction, okay, that they don't have to think about this thing, these things, that they just do it. It's habit, okay? You've done it so many times that way that that's the way you do it, okay? It's kind of like this. How many of you guys, if you were to go right now and go to the restroom, and go pee in the urinal, all right? And you may be talking on that Bluetooth or talking to a buddy, all right? And you walk in and it's out, right? Okay? You never made one thought on how to do that, did you? Okay, I have to unzip the pants. I have to put my underwear down and I have to grab my dick, okay? No, you just, I mean, because you've done it eight million times, right? Self one is, is, self two already knows it. Self one says take a piss, self two does it. Okay? Well, it's the same thing. You've got to ingrain that in your kids. When they, learn, when they catch a football, and Coach Yarbs calls it, let's be a nerd. Okay? <laughs> be a nerd means don't be cool. Don't go, you know, you know, here I go, man. I'm, you know, I catch the ball and I'm doing all. It's be a nerd. See the ball hit your hands. See the ball tucked away. Your head comes down. Tuck it away. All right? Be a nerd. And then as soon as a ball is in your possession, we want to see a burst, okay? A burst. And burst is a noticeable change of speed. So when he catches that thing, all right, and this is the time Coach Moore does his bond. This is the time Coach Moore comes down. He's a defensive guy. This is the only time he comes down. He bonds with my guys here, okay? Because he's back here. He's trying to knock the ball away. He's the one yelling at him, burst, man. Look at it, you know, it's pretty cool. He's down there and he's coaching the receivers. All right, it's awesome. All right, but it's here and now it's burst. Noticeable change and there's always a 20-yard finish rule. Okay, so you catch it. Pat and go, obviously, you're already deeper than 20. But if you were to catch hitch, be a nerd, noticeable change of speed, and now finish through 20 yards, then get back in line. Okay, so that's a pat and go. It always starts out the same way. Pat and go, which are the fades, down and back. Then whatever the quick game was for that day, okay? Well, today it's 90 and 95, okay? So 90 and 95. So as we come back, but, but it's funny, I'll tell you a story. We go, we, UCLA, our first spring practice, so we're doing this. And it's a cluster, all right? Kids don't know how to work. They don't know what to expect from the drill. What They don't know what to expect from us. All right, kids love it when they know, right after this, I run over here and I do team takeoff as fast as I can. Then right after this, I run over here and do pat and go. And I know I'm going to run a fade. I know I'm going to run a hitch. I know I'm going to run a slant. Then I know I'm going to run a snag. All right? And it's the same every day for them. All right? And now you as a coach can start coaching them and they will become better at their skills. But um, the first day, we're, still, we're doing pat and go. All right? And me and Jim are standing back there. And it's like he looks at me and says, bro, because he's used to the NFL, right? He's used to Michael Vick throwing it to Terrell Owens, okay? I got some slappy throwing it to another slappy who can't catch. He can't throw, you know, and the balls are all over the place. And guy hitting in there, dropping it, and the whole thing. He looks at me and says, he says, I might have made a mistake here. I don't know if he can win a football game, all right? And then it was funny because at the end of spring, we're doing pat and go, and it's the same things. All right, and you saw a noticeable change in these kids. All right, they became better at, at, at doing skills. Okay, 
So anyway, so we're down and back, okay? Quarterbacks, all right? We're always, I've always got the quarterbacks, they know they always hang around each other, okay? So like if I'm throwing pat and go and you're the next quarterback in line, you know, and I got two managers that, all, all you have to do is if you're throwing two of anything, all right, is usually I only have one ball that gets snapped. So if there's two quarterbacks throwing, I don't, I never, I don't like it when there's, there's two balls that get snapped. Okay, because of this reason, this manager that's snapping it, all right, you know, he, you know, some guy's yelling at him or something, and this, this quarterback, he's always running the drill, and you're the other quarterback, and here's my two managers, and he goes, said, hike, all right, and this guy's just, oh, shit, and his snap comes off a little bit later than this guy, well, that receiver's a little bit later, this guy's looking at two balls out there, and he's like, okay, which one do I go on? So it's always just one ball. All this guy do is he'll just have one in his hand. There, it's snap, go through your mechanics, make the throw, okay? And then the other thing is all your other guys and myself and whoever, right? Receiver coaches are usually out there. The running coach is usually standing back here with me. Is we're kind of hanging around the quarterbacks as much as we can, just like coach says, just to make him do this, slide his feet and make a throw, or, or step up and make a throw, okay? So it's not just here, throw, here, throw, all right? He's got to hitch. He's got to do something to make these throws. Okay, we come back. We're going to work our quick game on the 40, hitch, hitch. Okay, at this point, we get into our inside guys become inside guys, and our backs become backs, all right? So we'll go all go through the outside guys, hitch, hitch. Burst, finish, get in line. Inside guys, you're, you're, we're, we're working on 90. Okay? At this time, your quarterback's working on hand signals. All right? My guys already know it, but they, you know, the receivers already know what's coming. But, but they'll look out, and they'll, he'll go like this. All right, here we got this, guys. 90. Okay, do it right. Do it right. Everybody gets to do it right. Brett will go 90. All right? Catch. Hitch. Hitch. Okay, inside guy, you're running the vertical seam off hitch. All right? What we want you to do is, all right, go vertical, make sure if, make sure you outside release the Willie backer if you can. So what I tell them is, is, re, is your angle of departure, all right, is if there's a guy on top of me to outside, is I release through his, uh, my release point is through, is starts at his outside hip, okay? That just starts it. So if coach was the will, he'd come off like this, all right, if he runs out, you stay vertical, okay? Because what is this route trying to do? It's trying to protect the hitch throw, okay? You're trying to protect the wheel, the hitch from the wheel getting underneath it, okay? If I throw it to you, it's because the wheel, I went like this, the wheel ran away. Now I stay vertical and give the quarterback my eyes. So now my receiver coaches, they're usually standing there giving these guys that look. They'll just stand there, you know, Maybe do that to him, maybe do that to him, whatever. But just kind of give him a feel. Quarterback, simple as showing an inside thing. When do you throw the inside seam, Brett? Well, when the wheel backer, all right, takes away the hitch. Okay, corner can't take away a hitch, can he? Because if he presses, it turns to fade. If he's off, I'm throwing it. Okay. If it's cover two, it's side pocket. All right. So we're just saying the only guy that can really take it away for you, quarterback, is the wheel backer. So I want you on this one, Brett, is when you go 90, you threw the hitches. Now I want you to work on your eyes. You should be here. Bam, you should look at the hitch. Okay? And it's catch, set, throw. So it's catch, set, hitch. Now it's catch, set, no, eyes back to the inside, and the inside seam guy gets it. So that gives this guy a feel of where that ball's coming to him. He should catch this thing about 12 yards deep, okay? Put it right on his face mask. Do you have a question? Well, I just was trying to clarify. So you are running it as a pattern and not individual routes and making the read every time, correct? No, just these lines running the hitch, we're throwing the hitches. Right. Now you guys are up, inside guys. Now you're running the inside seam, okay? okay? So you, you throw the individual routes. Individual routes, all right? Bam, all the hitches, all the inside seams, okay? But I want this guy to start... He, to him, everybody's going, all right? To him, he's throwing the inside seam in this period. He went hitch, no, inside seam, bam, okay? All right, so I know this is kind of 
boring, but so today was 90, 95. Okay, so we go. Beginning when you start with this, is it slower so you can teach that inside guy to, okay, here's the will, these are the things the will does, how do I get around him? No. Because there's no real individual time to work on that. This is, this is, as you're the receiver coach, this is your time. Okay? This is your time. And I, and I, I don't give up. I will not give up the speed of practice. All right? Now, don't, don't forget, all right? At 645, your group got together and ran onto the field for 15 minutes. Okay? Or you took your group out and walked through. Okay? Okay? This... Exactly. So, you know, as I know, you got to, I don't know, how did you guys do it? Did you stop and coach during this time? <laughs> yeah. Coach, I mean, what? no. No. Coach you don't. Now, you guys are coaching on the run. Yeah. All right? And so, like, if I'm, you know, I'm, I'm the coach and I'm trying to teach this guy this, I'm like, okay, man, he's throwing the hitches, man. I run over here and they're giving it throw inside scenes. It's like, hey, why not, you know, attack my outside hip, all right, and then slide in and let him feel that. Attack my outside hip, slide out, let him, let it, whoops, damn, let him feel that, okay? So, no, we're not going to stop and explain it to everybody. Okay, we're running an inside seam, guys. This is what we want. And, and it, the, biggest, the biggest thing is finding a period of time before, after practice, okay? Now, a little bit different scenario. I've, I've coached in some other states, but, you know, we're blessed in Texas to have time. Okay, we have, we have time to work with our kids, but um, huh? no. we film all of our practices. Okay, so after practice, we spend some time with our kids to work on some stuff like that that, that kind of gets neglected during practice. But, but again, we want to play fast. Okay, we, we just rep the, the speed, speed of practice. You know, we get a lot of stuff done. It, and, and kids gravitate to that, yeah. which is huge. <clears throat> Because if you stop the coach, if I stop to coach him during this period, I promise you, the other four guys, all right, behind there, one of them may be listening to you, but the other guys are going, when's it my turn? No, I get that. Yeah. We wound up calling it, we just got other stuff out and built more individual time. Well, which is fine, because there's going to be some individual time in we here. We don't. Yeah. <coughs> our kids don't have time to look at film. We don't get meeting time. We don't have any of that. So we had to have time for them to learn and solve. So we just got out 15 minutes. And, and, and you're exactly right. I, and I have all that time. I got cut-ups. I can go through. I got all that time I need. But I wanted them, even though it may look like shit, I don't know, for the first week, like it did for us, all right, the repetition of doing it over and over the next day, over and over, is I just didn't want to give up the tempo of the practice, okay? All right, so 90. Now we go 95. So you're working the... Stick routes on the inside, all right? Now we're working the quick fade to the outside, okay? So you guys got the deal, down and back, okay? Next thing that always gets done then is snag, okay? Oh, let's go back to the backs, all right? Backs, you guys always start here. First time down, your check swing, okay? Check swing down and back, all right? Same thing, you want your, your, you're doing the same thing with your, your back, check, all right, swing, because what we're, what we're trying to get is check and no bubble. Check, width, parallel to the line of scrimmage, all right? As the difference in a hot swing and a check swing is two things. One is you're checking protection. Number two is you're swinging. It's not a hot swing, all right? As soon as you go your five steps or three steps, you're under control and you're starting to show the quarterback your, your numbers, okay? A hot swing, you're never under control. You're freaking running. All right, we're going to hit you on the move. Go over, them. Go over with them real quick, the five and three step, because it took me a while to, to, to gain. To, okay, to so. It's, it's pretty huge. Yeah, I'll, I'll, always, I'll always work this thing, and I kind of drew it up wrong for you guys, all right? I'll always work this thing kind of like team takeoff, all right? Is they know that the quarterbacks know on pat and go, all right, when we do this pat and go period, there's 20 minutes or whatever it is, okay, is they'll always start on a hash. The, the lead quarterback, all right, the other guys just kind of stand next to him. You know, if, I'm, if he's the lead guy and I'm throwing this hatch, I'll be there, all right. And then when they come back, they'll get on this hash. 
right? Because like you said, the ball's coming from different angles to the receivers from a hash, okay? Plus, on our backs now, if we're doing swings, okay, is a back, when he runs any kind of swing, whether it's check swing or hot swing, which these things are huge for us, check swing, okay, we call it skip, all right? It's called a skippy release, all right? He skips, skips twice, and then he goes. If he's going to the field, he's going five steps as hard as he can, parallel. What's that? All check swings are, are, are skip if he's running swing. Now, he could, have a, uh, he could have a check down, but he still skip, skip, check down, okay? So now he's just checking down where the mic is, but it's five steps to the field, okay? In theory, that should put him about the hash. I don't know, is, it, is that way in high school? Close, okay? But what, what I don't like is, is, is when, you, when you're, and they, because I tell you, those guys, man, they'll get, They'll get lazy, all right, because they never get the ball hardly, all right? But it's skip, skip, and it's five. I mean, it's five hard. One, two, three, four, five. Now I start to turn and give my head to the quarterback. If it's check swing, now they kind of drift, all right? They're thinking I give my numbers to the quarterback, all right, because I don't want him downfield, but when I throw it to him, his landmark all right, should be to the field inside edge of the numbers, okay? If it's to the boundary, this line's doing him to the boundary, okay? He's three steps. One, two, three, okay? His landmark is outside edge of the numbers. So don't forget, like, if I'm throwing, like, Honda, all right, I want, I, I still need this guy to uncover the curl route as fast as he can, okay? So if he, runs his, if he runs his check swing like this, or he's bubbling, all right? You know, you'll see your kids do this a lot, check, and, they, and, they, and they run their swings like that. He's not uncovering that quick enough for me. I want him to go, man. Go, get out there, spread them out, all right? So that goes down and back. I know I spent a lot of time on this, but. No, no, I'm at the 40, okay? So what are we trying to get? Burst and finish, right? So I throw this to the back, and I'm the quarterback, okay? He knows, check swing, you know, he knows that's like Honda to him. So he'll go one, two, three. His eyes will do just this, and all we're doing is just showing the check swing to the back. He'll go plant, he'll say in his mind, to me it's like no. Is he open? No, okay? He'll hitch, no. Okay, this is the time too as I, start, I try to, I tell those guys, hey, you guys, move, move, to the, move to your third progressions, quarterbacks, okay? So he'd go, one, two, three, no, hitch, no, and he'd kind of do this and throw that check swing because it happens all the time. Okay, he just won't go like this, check swing, all right? So in his mind, he's going through his progression, one, two, three, and that's the time. And I, I think it helps because your receivers, they get a feel for how, when is this ball really going to might come to me, all right? Because if you just take basic curl flat or Honda, like everybody runs, okay, and we're check swing, okay, we're going to run a key there, we're going to run the, either key or wheel, whatever, okay, we're going to run the choice, okay, we're going to run the turn route there, and we're check swinging, right? That's kind of what we want, all right? Well, your quarterback ought to go one, two, three, plant and throw, okay? It's not there. I should hitch and throw. It's not there. I should either move or hitch again, and now the ball, he gets, gets a feel where that ball's coming to him, okay? Um, so 90-95, all right? Check swing down, check swing back. Now it's snag, all right? Outside guys. Okay, this is where the coaches, they stand right here and they're the backer, all right? The coaching points on the snags are, um, okay, and I'll do this like for the first, first week, is I'll, I'll have just a, a little disc or a cone, and I'm going to put that thing six yards deep, all right, in the B gap. So there's your cone. 
six yards deep in the B gap. So there's this cone like that, all right? You're split right here. If this, and, and I don't know, where's your, where's your I, it's seven yards, but I don't know where it is if the ball's on a high school hash. Is he outside edge of the numbers? That's a great answer because I I'm, I'm a is it right because I'm like him like with my backs all my guys I'm like line up where you get the job done the best it's different so anyway but I think it's about seven yards whatever okay and all you're trying to get this guy to do is start is start to set the angle that he's running this snag at there's his angle there's his angle okay your backers or he's playing, he's giving you the read, okay? I cross his face, he crosses mine, okay? As soon as that happens, you set, your, put your, your stick your foot in the ground, and now you give the quarterback your eyes, okay? Stick your foot in the ground, give the quarterback your eyes. You still have coaches there for uh, linebackers right there? This is where usually, like, like my inside receiver coach or all do it or the running back coach, we'll, we'll jump up and we'll be that guy. We'll just kind of stand in here, we're like the wheel backer, okay? And then all, the, all we'll do is we either step up, step back, run out. You know, we'll just give him something so he knows that he could actually snag at any place on this line. Okay, it's wherever it happens. All right. As the hardest thing here, and I don't know if you had, the hardest thing for my guys is this, is that if the, you were the wheel backer and I'm running snag in here, is they all want to do this. They can almost get to him, and then they do this. And they look at the quarterback, all right? So you got you to gotta, you gotta freaking grind them on this, all right? I'm running. I'm the quarterback. I'm making the read for the quarterback, all right? I don't look at him till I want the football on snag, okay? So as, I, as I'm coming, now I feel I cross it, all right? Now I put my foot in the ground and snap my eyes and, and give him a target, okay? Quarterbacks, you guys are looking at throwing an inside shoulder throw or an outside shoulder throw. Okay, receivers, we're looking, we're looking to be a nerd, tuck it, turn in your shadow, and burst, and finish. All right? So if it, it, like, it's beautiful when it all choreographs together, right? They come down, bam, they stick their foot in the ground, it's here, he puts it on his inside shoulder, he's a nerd, he tucks, he dips his shoulder, all right? I mean, I've had them before where you do maybe have them do a little hand touch, all right? When they catch it, they turn, it's the old settle up noose drill, all right? from Leach and those guys, all right? They catch it, have him put his hand to the ground like that, burst and finish, okay? So they're snag, all right? Um, at some point, I may just tell these guys, not at the same time, all right? Because I also will let these guys, all right, if everything blows open, is stay on the move, okay? And so what stay on the move means to him is you're the wheel backer. I'm coming, I'm looking for somebody to cross face or cross his face. You blitz, the mic blitz, there ain't shit in there, all right? You're looking, oh, shit, there's nobody in there, right? Probably, man, guy chasing me, just give the quarterback my eyes and stay on the move. If I'm looking, I'm booking. If I'm looking, give me the football, man. I'm going to go score, okay? Snag. You guys good on the snag? Hot swings, swings, um, check downs, all right, in Detroit. Okay, there's the four things the back do. 90s, snag, mesh. There's, a, there's what our receivers do, okay? Same thing on mesh. We're working on mesh. These guys stay here. They give you a man or a zone read, okay? Man or a zone read. So as I come across on mesh, coach is the back, uh, offside backer. I'm really actually kind of running the snag on him. He comes. If he's sitting there, I work on my guys to burst him. Sit, give my eyes, all right? He disappears, gives me green grass, all right? I take the grass. So the big, you know, I want receivers to think these, all right? Play with my eyes, take the grass or find the grass. I will, give, I will give these guys a freedom, all right? And I might go for a whole two weeks 
teach them snag now. I say, listen, guys, all right? If you start on the snag and there's nobody in there, there's no Mike Backer sitting there, there's nobody in there, and you want the ball right now because it's like it's common sense, right? If you're in the playground, you'd, throw it, you'd say, just throw it to me, man. I'm, there's nobody in here, okay? Just give me your eyes, and the quarterback will give you the football. Okay, now, if that Will Backer blitzes in a game, and he, he goes, Will Backer blitzed, all right? And he gave the eyes like this, and the mic's sitting in there, and my quarterback throws it to you, and that Mike Backer breaks your jaw, that ain't my fault, bro. What'd I tell you? There can't be anybody in there, okay? So you'll even see us sometimes where the kids, even if it's a little bit muddy, they're, they're used to doing this. But all of a sudden, it's blitz, man. There, there's two man. There's nobody in there. Here I come. Bam, I'll take the football, okay? So take grass, find grass. Perfect example, you know, that's a great example of it. Find the grass, take the grass, okay? Mesh, find the grass, okay? There's a backer sitting there. I can't take the grass, so now I gotta find the grass for the, he disappears, there's green grass, take it. Just take it, all right? And you have to train your guys big on this, I think, all right? Is that they gotta know the concept, they gotta play with their eyes, okay? Anyway, I'm spending way too much time on this, okay? So you can see, that's every day. Maybe the next day we're working on double slant. So this would be 94 or, and 91, whatever your quick game is for that day. Snag and mesh always get worked on. The backs, they do the same thing every day. Check swing, hot swing, check down Detroit, okay? So on pat and go, last time down, the back's sitting here, and we'll work on that. Look at the 95, hand him, burst, finish, okay? Now, at this point, the backs leave. Okay, and they go with the old line and they work on run, whatever the runs are that day. Green, Terra, Zorro, Detroit, maybe it's Shark, whatever, uh, whatever fronts. You know, I don't. I, to be honest with you, I really don't know what those some bitches do down there. I just the backs know that they turn around and they're gone. Okay, now I got the rest of the receivers and we're working on the four concepts that we're going to have that they're going to run that day in practice. Okay, so if it's caddy. Well, let's, let's, start, let's start with just that practice. This is obviously practice one, okay? So we say, okay, it's Exxon. All right, guys, trio right. All right, Exxon. All right? We don't have the backs. Exxon, he's running the snag, okay? Well, guys, this week in Exxon quarterbacks, I'm always tagging it with Dagger on the backside, all right? So Dagger, all right? A Dagger route. It's just a high-low route. We tell our guys that when you're running dagger routes and you are the basic, the basic route, is that we always want you to gain two yards on your release. Okay, so he knows dagger, why he knows I got basic. Okay, you can call it wide dagger, whatever. That's, he, you're the dagger guy, all right? You got basic right there. All right, basic route's always the same. If you got the basic, you wide, it's the same on shallow cross, all right? You want to widen, all right? So I, we talked to him about either gaining two yards or losing two yards on release. Stem release, seam release, uh, blast release, burst release. You can call it whatever you want, all right? But they know I want to gain two yards, all right? Gain two yards, and now I'm getting through 10 yards, all right? At 10 yards, all right, 10 to 12 yards, you're going to sit, all right? You're going to sit, turn inside, and you are finding grass or taking grass for me. Okay? So do not give the quarterback your eyes until you want the freaking football. All right? So if this was man, let's say, all right, and I'm running the basic, I outside release, I get to 10 to 12, boom, I'm running the basic, I see it's man coverage, so there's probably nobody inside. I'm giving the quarterback my eyes, and I'm moving, I'm looking, I'm booking. Same thing a guy does on snag, Okay? If not, all right, I'm here. I start to see the Mike linebacker. Well, he's way, he's way in there, all right? Now I give the quarterback my eyes and get soft, okay? The Mike worked to me. I might go by him, get soft, okay? So never run through grass, okay? Always find the grass for your quarterback. A lot of times, these, a lot of times this thing looks like this. He freaking stops right there like a curl, 
Okay, because he came to the top, man, he's freaking wide open. Hey, I found the grass, bro. Throw me the football. All right? That's what I want. Okay, F, you're now the snag route to this side. Okay? So what we're just trying to do is control the mic or whoever the inside backer is where we can high-low him. Okay? His progression looks like this. One, two, three. Okay? Coach and point on this. This is the same concept when we were going to talk about two and three man snag, three man snag, as our shell concept. Okay? You're running Chevron. You're running Chevron with a snag in a corner. All right? Well, if we run Chevron with a basic, all right, which is shell, okay, he knows this is that all I do is I cross the first backer's face. I sit. Well, that first backer's probably like right there. I sit, if I'm in grass, I stay grass, all right, and now I go that way, okay, so that changes him. That right there is the dagger concept, okay, that's just the dagger concept, inside dagger concept. So his progression is one, two, three. So the quarterback, if we're throwing this, and I got four quarterbacks back here, or three quarterbacks and a coach, whoever, all right, you're one, you're two, you're three, you're four. Okay, so we'll go trio right, trio right, Exxon, dagger, 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 dagger. All right, this guy goes, hey, I got the, I got the snag, all right? He ought to be one, two, three, hitch, snag, okay? One, two, three, there's obviously no hot swing, okay? His eyes ought to actually look out here first, hitch, hit the snag. This guy ought to go one, two, three, hitch, no snag, hitch up. His eyes ought to go right to this guy, throw him the football. This guy ought to go one, two, three, no, no. All right, I'm sorry, no, no, all right, he ought to be throwing the grab or the pivot route, all right, fourth guy, all right, this is a post over the top, okay, fourth quarterback, you're the alert, okay, you're the alert, I got split safeties or I got the safeties playing low or I got man coverage and it's hang loose or whatever, all right? We made this decision before the ball was even snapped. It. We're going to the alert, okay? It's the gift. So he's just going one, two, three, and that ball's gone. So this ball, these balls ought to come out with, these two ought to come out, this one ought to come out, and the third guy ought to hit that one, okay? So that's how we work, work the route, okay? Same thing. Everybody catch, burst, finish. Second group, finish. If you got a third group, third group, boom. You guys always rotate all the way around, all right? Turn around, put it on the other hash. I'm sorry, keep it on the same hash, all right? Do the same play coming back, okay? Anyway, so you got the idea. So we're going to work these concepts today, Exxon Caddy, Daytona, China, okay? Then we're going to take, if we got any time left, and just work the lock and the cowboy. Half the time, we don't even get to that shit, all right? We run out of time, okay? Next thing, okay, the line has been down here, okay, working their run, so now we have a group period. So now you have an individual period, all right? So now, because we've been busting their ass now for a while, okay? Now the receiver coach takes his guys. And if you wanted to work on inside scenes, work on them. If you want, I don't really give a shit what you work on, okay? But you got 10 minutes, and five minutes of that, you guys better be working on keys and locks. Okay, so maybe it's some route that you guys weren't doing right and you got time. Hey, listen, man, we're running that basic. All right, we got to make sure we get through 12 or you do a little drill or whatever. But I know at the end, you, we're gonna, the receiver coach is going to come together and we're going to work on keys and locks. So whatever the keys were, the receiver coach knows, all right, well, today we're going to work key one out of dual. All right. So I'm going to put a guy, put a guy, put a guy, however, put a bat, whatever I want to do. And we're going to work on, bam, he's a little bit deeper, push more vertical. He's there, go right at him, whatever, all right? I usually send a quarterback down there to him to throw the key, all right? And we're going to work on that part of it, okay? All right? And then right after that, we're going to throw everybody a key one. Now we're going to go lock one, okay? Boom, lock one, okay? And then we're, maybe we're going to do it out of trio. Okay, lock and keys. We're going to work maybe on comets, whatever, okay? But your receiver coach is handling that, okay? Did you say yes or 
yesterday that, that you signal in, if you're running Zorro, you signal in Zorro, key one, key two, or you give the quarterback the freedom to no, signal? No, I don't. Because here's what, I tried to do that, all right? And maybe if I had a guy that's been five years in the, or three or four years in the system, all right? But here's what happens is, and they start worrying about what I'm calling out there, you know? So if you just say, run Zorro with a key, then they'll go, give me a one, all right? I don't want that. I'm giving you Zorro one, all right? He'll go, hey, Zorro odd, Zorro odd, Zorro odd, all right? Remember, we want to go, all right? Okay, now I'll game plan it that week. So, so in the runs of Zorro, he'll know, hey, we're going to put Trio into the boundary and run Zorro, and it's always going to be key one. I'm not going to run any key twos against these guys, okay? Or in dual, all right, this week, I want all key twos, all right, because they're, they're more of a quarters team, all right? Now here's the key. I can just go block him, all right, throw it to that guy and run. If it was more of a post safety team where it was like this, okay, that week, hey, dual, man, it's all going to be key ones, okay? Now I can push the wheel and I can get the ball out here because there's my key. So that's kind of, it's kind of set up during the week. Now that doesn't mean I won't change that shit in the middle of the game, all right? And the other part is, who are you throwing it to out there, okay? I want to throw it to the best guy, the guy who's good at catching and making a guy miss or getting his pads down. And the big coaching point on this to the guys, to the receivers are, is this is a huge period for us, okay, is because they got to be tough son of a bitches, right? And you got to convince them they're tough, and you got to convince them that if you guys don't block and you don't run and make me four yards every time, I'm just going to call Zorro. I'll never call a key. I'll let you son of a bitches block all day out there, okay? Would you rather catch the ball or block the call? Block the ball. Catch the ball or block, all right? I I promise you I know the answer to every receiver would say, give me on that one, right? Throw me the ball, okay? So anyway, this is still whatever was in your install for that day, all right? Maybe it's, hey, we're going to put two locks in today, okay? We're going to run dual lock one, okay? Because we're throwing a lot of key ones today, we're going to throw key and we're going to throw lock, okay? And then the other one we're going to do today, guys, is we're going to throw comet lock. Okay, so that's the two locks that are in the game plan. Okay, that's when they're working on them, right there. Hey, guys, when I call comet lock, always cab it. I don't give the shit on the look. Maybe that's your game plan for that week. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's you want that. Okay, so however you build, build it, that's, yeah, I'm only repping the stuff I'm going to call. Okay, so, I, and I'm, I'm sorry to back up practice, folks, we've been debating this for a month, because there's nothing up on the side about communication. So, just like you talked about yesterday, three years ago when we started the spread, we were press <coughs> fans, and I burned those, and then we went, um, uh, signal to the skills, code to the O-line with the directional code. But we even in the playoffs this year played a couple games in a barn where it was it was loud enough to where we had we had some crucial situations where our old lineman didn't get get the code from the quarterback or one of them missed it. So we're we're I want to kind of know your opinion of it and what you do. So so we're debating about signaling to the skills and having our offensive line coach give a separate signal to the old line so they're watching. We're trying to get faster. Matt, and I, I'm not quite sure what you do. I know you said your son signals in. Does he signal? Yeah. Uh, what's, what's your system like there? We're just, we're kind of up in the air about it. I just let my son signal, all right, because I thought it created some value for him. So if there's ever a chance the head guy would hire somebody, he'd hire him. <laughs> okay? Because basically when he got hired, I got a pay raise, right? Because now I don't have to pay that somebody's rent every week, all right? But I went through the whole exact same thing you guys went through. The wristbands, and then it's then it's uh, signal the old line coach. Say, and some guys do it that way. That's just not how we do it. All right, but but it, it, the more parts you put in this, and and who who's signaling, who's it going from, and all that stuff, the more to me it slows you down. So for us, 
and like, and like you just saw, is that team takeoff, pat and go, locks, okay? So, so if we're working on locks right here, my quarterback's down there, and, and he's, just, he's just mixing it up. He's going, hey, boom. Ready, set, hike, bam. He's going, boom. Ready, set, hike. All right, he's going, boom, lock. Ready. Do your skills here, green, 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 or do they even look to the sideline? They, the, the smart ones look to the sideline on, I don't know what you guys do, but basically my quarterback tells them all what to do. He goes, green, 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 green. All right? And these guys are freaking green. All right? And then they're, they all get to where they just freaking lock in on that quarterback. They get set, and they're looking right at Brett like this, okay? Brett's in here, and he just went, green, 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 green. And say we were just running Tear Zorro, Comet, okay? he go, green, 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 green. Well, the signal he got from the sideline was green, okay, green, Zorro, Comet. That's all he got. Hey, hey, let's do this, green, Zorro, Comet, okay? If it was, if it was odd, all right, and, and, and by the end of the week, my guys know it anyway, but if it was odd, then Taylor would just go, hey, go green, Zorro, Comet, okay? But the quarterback knows I wouldn't go green, tear, Zorro, you know what I mean? They know the game plan, all right? They know green fast is Zorro this way because it's always a run away from that. And anyway, you get my, my drift. If you fucked up, he might know that you fucked up in coloration. Oh, all the time. <laughs> here's, here's the key with that, okay? Your signaler is the most important guy you got on your staff. Our signaler, he would fix the mistake on the fly, and if and if the call was coming in and it was um um, help, he signals the play, and yeah. you got to be fine Taylor, with that. Taylor's the same way. So you play in front of fifty thousand people, you and I've noticed you had you say Brett's up there in the sand, you know zero odd zero odd or, or nine twelve nine twelve. Do, I mean, do those do the fat guys in front ever have trouble? Never. My guys never, the old line never has a problem, all right? And, and, and I get, try to get my guys, if this was the old line, you got to remember, they're, everybody's like this, everybody's getting set. Brett's kind of standing right behind him. He's going, green, 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 green. And he's going, Zorowad, 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 all right? He just told them Zorowad or 913 or 5013 or whatever, okay? And like, like he says, he knows what I want. I gave him green, tear, Zorro. He knows exactly what the play is. I wouldn't even have to give him the comic, all right, because he knows that's what we run. All right, if I gave him green, uh, I think green fast, Zorro, he would know green, 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 green. He'd know that'd be Zorro even. He'd go 912, 912, all right, comet, all right, and exactly what he says is right. The, the guy, the only guy that slows it down is me, all right, and Taylor, he's always yelling at me. Brett's doing this to me. And then you go, uh, I don't know what I want, and freaking Taylor will just call a play. All right? There's a problem you have with signaling the field guys that, that I've found. Okay, we're, and, and Coach can testify, we're fast. Okay, we can't get any faster. We're snapping the ball one second off the play clock 98% of the time. And that's, and that's not a lie. Okay, the skill guys are over there, you know, buttoning their stinking, you know, pants and fixing their gloves and doing all this crap. We're trying to run a play, you know, fixing their socks. Okay, my quarterback's in charge of how those guys receive the play. They, and it, and it also puts a lot of emphasis on the quarterback. Those guys respect him now, and he's running the show, okay? And, and it is as fast as we possibly can go. When that play is going on, the quarterback's getting the formation call. He's jumping down the field, green, 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 green. Everybody's hearing it, even if they're on a pile. Okay, now that's out of the way. So if he was signaling to me and I was his quarterback, all right, and I just ran Zorro over here, I, just, I mean, what he's saying is exactly right. We do exactly the same thing. It was like this, all right, and I carried out my fake whatever, and I'm like this, what do you got? Yeah, trio right, trio right, trio right, trio right, trio right. All right, guys are getting off piles, and we, do, we emphasize during practice that, that in during practice, we can try to get our guys to hand the ball back to the official. Our guys are, are coming back as fast as they're going that way. Okay, trio right, trio right, trio right. He just gave me this. Okay, there's Exxon. Okay, so all you do to Brett is, hey, trio right. That quarterback coming back, that should be in on, if he was going slow, the quarterback should be 
after the play is gone, that's over and done, but he should be getting back the communication on whoever's giving it anyway. I'm just saying, you put yourself when you, he's automatically looking, you back to the coach after the play is gone. I don't care if you're running a power offense and you're walking back to the fucking huddle. If you're okay, well, I, I would tell you, you go watch guys that get in huddles and their quarterback, yeah. he's watching the play because he knows he's got 40 well, seconds. Yeah, but I'm just saying, but that was a hard part for the quarterback. I tell my quarterback, hey, I want you worried about your stats on Saturday morning. I don't give a crap. You're watching, you know, you're watching a 40-yard fade go down the field. I don't, I, Saturday is that time. Well, okay. I'm just saying, we all said that's what we out here to throw shit up in the air. Even yeah. when you, well, I have ran huddle situations. My quarterbacks don't never go in that fucking huddle. I don't care if everybody walk back. Yeah. He still gets to me. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Regardless, so what he was saying as far as the signals or whatever, if it's fast, slow, or whatever, that QB need to get the call. His thing was about how to get the calls in. Right. And then I was talking, well, last night, the Grossman, uh, Grossman coach, the line coach, he was talking about his line to make calls. And he said he would, he don't even play them if they come, you know, fire, fire, fire. He says the higher value is with all the positions like the lineman calls, the back calls, the quarterback calls. He said he gets a net out of them. So he has them hollering in the locker room. He said, stand in the mirror and holler out the calls. This is what we did. We did some, we started, we ran this halfway through last season with our JV team. And our dichotomy in our league is, <coughs> is we're the small school in our league. Everybody else in our league has three teams, freshmen, JV, which is sophomores and juniors, and then their varsity. We have JV, which is freshmen and sophomores, and then our varsity. So we had freshmen and sophomores running this offense against sophomores and juniors. We were 0-5 the first half of the season, and then we switched to this and went 3-2. and two. We started with wristbands, but what you get caught up in is those guys start looking down every single time and, like you said, flipping it. We only had two pages, but they're still like, what's numbers that? What sets that? So we said, screw that, we're not doing wristbands. What we did is we took a whiteboard. We did something kind of like Oregon. We took a whiteboard about half that size and we broke it up into six segments. And what one segment was, everything we had, we had, we only used six formations, six plays, six total plays, like four total motions, and then our line calls. So what we broke, we broke it up into six sections and that first box had one, number one through six on it. That first box told everyone the formation. The second box told everyone, told we only had the F and the, F and the T running motion it told you one of the four motions. It was numbered one through four. So the running backs knew to look in, the, look in that second box. The third box was, you know, one was L, two was R, three, three was Ron, or, or, you know, whatever it was. It was one through six. And, you know, so it was all played out, and then your play. And then the, then the two of the squares, the first square and the last square were dummies. You put any number in there. But what they did, in our quarterback, as soon as the play, as soon as the balls go, we conditioned him to come to the numbers. He, as soon as the play was go, he would walk over to me. And he's a freshman. He's like five foot five. But he comes straight over to the numbers after the play. All he does is look at the box. And he's calling out the formation. He would go, and we did red and white because of our school colors. And red was to the right and white was left. So he'd go like red, 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 red. But then everyone just looked at the board. And we actually went silent count because everyone looked. The center actually looked at the number on the board. And he was our one going, he was our one going L, 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 R, 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 R. To the, to the whole line. That's all you heard. You heard the quarterback do the color. You heard the, the center give out the line call. Everyone looked at the board and we were silent count. And all he did was kick his leg and go. So, and the defense half the time could not line up. It was a completely different speed for us. And then we did, so it's kind of like Oregon, how Oregon throws up all the symbols and everything. And that's how we did it to make it faster for ourselves. But we had to do an eye test. We even held it up in the bleachers one day to make sure. If you can see it from there, then you can see it when we get it down on the sideline. So that's kind of what we did to kind of speed it up. So next season. It would also help some practice. You know, we're running those plays so, so quick in practice. I mean, God, I mean, our kids, our kids know what we're doing. I mean, you know, we're, we're repping those plays couple hundred times, you know, a couple hundred times a week in practice. They, they know what we're wanting, what, you know, situation on the field. We, we situationally practice. Kids, kids know, hey, I'm probably, probably got a 50-50 shot at knowing what coach is going to call here. Well, then that goes back to 
breaking it down and limiting it your place if you're just not getting involved in this system or this hurry up and fast tempo. You don't need no 50 plays. You don't have time for 50 plays. So I'll, I'll go out and beat somebody with six plays if I got to. I'm, well, I'm, I'm just saying I have done it and change, take one play and turn it into four yeah. or whatever. See, a lot of people get playbooks and they go buy them and they, like he said, I got stacks of shit too. And me to tell you, I, when I actually meet was riding a bicycle when I got him hired. But I knew meat knew football. You know, so I got hired right he got hired in the parking lot. I told our head coach, this is our DB coach. And he didn't even know him. But you can't take one and turn it into three or four. And then when you get into that, break the shit down. And then like you said, like we got a lot of guys that's going into this fast tempo stuff. The less they have to learn, the faster you can go. If you got 100 plays, you are not getting that shit in, and you're trying to go up tempo, you're going to either slap somebody's kid and get fired or whatever. But you got to be careful. Break it down. You got to break it down. You can't beat them with three plays. Like he said, uh, Lombardi, I don't give a shit. If you know I'm going to run power, I'm going to tell you I'm run power. I'm going to put in my kids that I know that you're better than the man across there. And if you come back leaking or say that he hit you in the mouth, then I'm going to hit you in your mouth. That's the way I go. And I'm just, that everybody has their own thing, but that's how I do it. You know, can I get you to go back a little bit and just tie it into what you guys are talking about? But when you're putting your plans into those installs, it seems like the priority in the install one, those are kind of your high rep plays. Go back and go back and take yourself, Scout, your cut ups. <coughs> All right. Then what Coach says is, is, is us, all right? I go in a game with 25 plays. That's it, all right? Just 25, all right? And it's the same. It's 25 total. If, if you, you, I can't, you know, it's the old argument, because I used to do this too. Shit, I was with the Jets. We had freaking 85 plays on third and two to six. I can't call them all, all right? So if you're going to run, say, Zorro, and I'll get right right to you, but just, because what he says is exactly right. If I'm going to run Zorro, and I want to run it this week out of trio, Zorro, weak, T1. Okay, now I'm going to run blue, green, tear, Zorro, weak, common. And then I want to run dual, F quick, or ghost, Zorro, Weak, all right, common. Okay, well, that's the same play. Okay, they're all Zorro weeks. It's all the same stuff. The quarterback's doing the same thing. The old line's doing the same thing. But, but I can't say that's one play. That's three plays. Okay, so that's how the I game plan it is. Okay, how am I going to run Zorro this week? Maybe it's into the boundary. Okay, maybe it's into the boundary over here. And I want to run. F quick and run the Zorro that way that week. So now I'm going to start building my offense from those. So now my play action, okay, well, I'm going to have a lock off that. I'm going to have, you know what I'm saying? So, so that, that's, what, that's what kind of drives it. But it's 25, it's 25 plays, all right? Sometimes, sometimes it's 20 plays that I go in there with, all right? So that was, that was a question. So install one, I look at it this way, all right? You got to stop these three plays on me. Zorro, Detroit, okay, and Shark. Okay, those are the three plays you got to stop right there. So an install one, all right? All right, well, I know I'm going to run Zorro and I know I'm going to run Detroit. So I'm just telling you how I set the installs up. You got, like he said, I'm Vince Lombardi. You got to stop that, okay? And you got to stop my draw, okay? All right, so I know that. Formations are formations. I built, you know, they got to, I'm going to build whatever formation I want. Okay, well, I'm going to attach things to this. Well, in the quick game, I'm going to attach 95 and let's say 93. So there's my quick game for the install that day. Okay, I'm also going to attach Chevron and Exxon. Okay, so those are, or let's say 91. Okay, 95, 91, so that's on install one. Okay. I also want to protect these plays with maybe rocket and laser screen. 
Okay? And I want to be able to move the pocket with Cowboy. Okay? And if I want to throw the ball deep on you, okay? If I want to throw the ball deep on you, it, we, we run what we call a real Lobo slip. All right? It's just two-man routes, three-man routes. But basically, so there's install one. That's, that's all install one would be. The next day, I go to Shark, okay, and say I want to run Zorro. So here's Zorro. Well, if I run Zorro here, okay, the, my, I'm making my quarterback possibly have to read an end, okay? And they're doing shit like that to him all day or whatever, okay? Well, I say screw it, man. I don't, I don't want to have him to do that. It's the same blocking for everybody, but I call it Colt, okay? Because Zorro rides a Colt, okay? Colt. That tells you guys, you guys all block Zorro, but instead of you having to go get the fifth, sixth guy in the box, you base that guy, okay? You just base him. You guys do the same thing. Takes the end read off the quarterback and puts it just to a one guy. So now I may tag that with 95, okay? If he does that, I th just like Detroit. If he does that, I throw that. If he plays that, I hand it off, okay? So, so you're right. It's the guts of who you're going to be. Install two are the little, I'm, I'm like, 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 well, to me, how do I protect that play, all right? How, how, I mean, what's my, as, as a play caller, that's what I want, you know, how are they stopping Zorro? Well, they're doing this, bang, and they're trying to, trying to do that for me, or they're spinning the safeties down, all right? Or how are they stopping Comet out here, you know? Well, they're going to this, and he's running his ass off, so now I'm get, really getting to play football, not just call plays, all right? Well, so what's my, what's my answer right there if they're doing that to my Comet? Lock, right? What's my answer if they're trying to do this? Colt, okay, or rocket screen. So as in course of the game, all right, I'm calling these plays, and hell, this is how they're stopping it. I know right where I'm going. I'm not just trying to out-scheme the guy. This is my answer, so I'm going to try to fix the problem. Here's what I call. Here's how I protect the play, protect the players. All right, does that make sense? Yeah. installs the way you do it, but if install one ends up being kind of the guts of my playbook and then two and three are my answers. Really, one and two is the guts. One and two the guts. Yeah. How does that look in a one-week condensed practice if you're only running install one, one or two day, or are you doing it differently in a game? So, no, go, so it goes, it goes like this. And boss me the first spring at UCLA, all right, I never got to what I had is whatever I had down on install three. I never moved on to all this stuff because we weren't good enough yet to do it. But so if this is install one, so as you sit down and you're going to put your offense in, there's one, there's two, there's three, okay? Okay, there's my runs, okay? Here's my play actions off my runs. Here's my quick game, all right? Here's my pass concepts, okay? Here's my screens. Okay, now remember in this whole thing, right, okay, it's like Coach says, situationally. Third down in red zone. Okay, first and second down is a bunch of bullshit, right? Call a freaking play, okay? This is, this, to me, that's is where you need to have success, right? I can be first and ten and call a play and make nothing, all right, and still have a successful drive, okay? If I don't make third downs, I don't have successful drives. If I don't score in a red zone, I don't have a successful drive. So keep that in mind as you install, okay? So I know on install one, maybe I'm just Zorro, Detroit, okay? Uh, my past concepts here are going to be Exxon and maybe Dayton or Chevron, whatever, right? Chevron and Daytona, because I think you have Verts, okay? My screen's rocket laser. My play action is uh, Dover, all right? My quick game is, is 91.95, so there's install one, all right? So now build your 25 plays out of that. Then I go install two. And so maybe I just put in shark. All right? I'm always going to carry in every install. Zorro's always going to get called. Okay? So there's Zorro. Okay? Um, my concepts. Okay, well, now let's go to Exxon and Caddy. Those are my two. Those are probably my Chevron, Daytona, Exxon, Caddy. 
Those are my most called plays. All right? Quick game. Say it's not just 92. Screen. Maybe it's Rose Linda. All right? Let's just do two installs. All right? And let's save, let's save install three for a straight vertical day. All right? All day, all I'm doing is throwing verticals. I'm throwing Daytonas. I'm throwing locks. I'm throwing, I'm working on throwing the ball down the field. Okay? Here's, pra here's practice one. There's practice two. Here's practice three, here's practice four. Here's practice five, here's practice six. Here's practice seven, here's practice eight. Okay? So I just, I just keep running these two back and forth, back and forth. I got a playlist here of one through 20. I got a playlist here of one through 20. Okay? Is that answering, answering your question? Okay? So now, as I, say I get to this, my third time I'm hitting install one and I've been running dual, I've been running dual. So my playlist kind of looks like this. Dual, Zorro Strong, Key 2. Okay? And then it's uh, Trio, Detroit, 95. Okay? Then it's Green, Blue, Tear, Zorro, Comet. It's Green, Blue, Fast, Zorro, Comet. Okay? Like, Co like Coach says, it's the same freaking play, okay? Well, let's say I get the next time around, i say, well, look, instead of going dual that, I'm going to add F quick to it, okay? So to me, green tear, Zorro odd comet is the exact same play as dual F quick. You're just changing the presentation. Good? Coach, what does it look like game week? Like, you figure out Sunday night or Saturday. Your, your 25 that you're going to go to battle with, or maybe a couple that you want to make sure that... I, uh, the only thing I really need on... So, as, as, I, as I, I never... Here's what I've... I never really watch cut-ups of the defense. Okay? Because that gets me to overthink the game way too much. All right? I don't want to ever play... I always hear me say this. I never want to... I don't like to play defense on offense. And I start watching cut-ups on everybody, and it's like, oh, shit, they do this, I can't run that. And they do this, I can't run that. Screw it, man. And guess what? Sometimes they win. All right? Play the next play. All right? So basically all I want to know is, is the O-line coach and the running back coach will go. I never watch film with, my guy, with the staff either. Okay? I just watch the games. All right? And I try to feel, I try to get like a fingerprint, what I think is what this defensive coordinator's personality is. I mean, what's, he, what's his third down and two to six? What, what am I usually seeing? All right? Is it different when I'm in the red zone or out in the field? You know, just kind of play the game as much as you can in your head. Okay? And then I usually, those guys will go watch it and they'll come in and they'll go, um, we do this for everything. Third down, red zone. Okay? And I'll get back to that in a second. But they'll come in and say, hey, the old line coach will say, man, here's, here's my runs today this, against these guys. Dual, F quick, I like this, okay? Because they bump backers. They don't roll coverages, they bump backers. So I like F quick, Zorro, okay? Well, if I'm gonna run F quick, Zorro, then that means I also like green, blue, tear, Zorro, okay? I also know uh, this week, I want you to put green and blue, FIB, into the boundary Okay, and go fast motion to the field and run Zorro. Okay, so he'll give me like the five or six ways that he wants to run the run game. Okay, Detroit's always three by one. It's either, Detroit's either trio, trio Detroit, I mean it's every week, okay, or it's free Detroit. Okay, so he knows he, didn't, he never says shit to me about Detroit. Okay, I want to run Shark this week this way. Hey, I don't like Shark this week. All right, they're a three-three stack team or whatever. Okay, okay, we ain't gonna call freaking Shark. Okay, all right, so he'll give me kind of there what he likes on his run game. Now that lets me start to build the offense. Well, I know F Quick is going to be huge. All right, is going to be a big run for me. So now I'm going to build my rocket laser screen. Okay, I'm going to build my lock. I'm going to rebuild my cowboy. Okay, I'm going to build all that off of that look. Because what I want, what the, what the defensive guys hate, sameness, right? All right, same look. Because what are, what are deep, to me, defensive guys are tendency guys. 
All right? When you see this formation, Joey, this is the play you're going to get. Okay? And then they scheme your plays, right? They want to stop your plays. Okay? Well, now he knows, hey, Joey, defensive guys, Joey, when you get F quick, it could be the run. It could be Colt. Okay? It could be the screen. It could be a lock. It could be a cowboy. Okay? Or it could be Exxon. Okay? So there's your, like, six-play, little six-play package of dual F quick. Right? And then usually, like, when I'm calling him in a game, I go, like, in this big Chip Kelly thing, I go by, like, uh, either quarters or by, by possessions of, all right, fucking I'm, we're, hey, we're, we're rolling F quick this deal. F quick Zorro. F quick Colt. Oh, F quick Lock. F quick Cowboy. All right? Because I want to see how they're going to play it. Is that making sense? Yeah. So that's how I build it. Oh, yeah. Idea? By Sunday? Yeah. yeah Sunday, by Monday at noon, 2 o'clock, I'm, I'm looking for shit to do. So you're repping those 25. I'm just repping, oh, the, I'm repping the shit out yeah, of them. Okay. All right? I'm repping them, repping them, repping them, repping them, repping them, you know. And my call sheet actually looks like that. Okay? It's 1 through 25. Then over here, I'd have third down. Okay? It's two to six, I got one, two plays, all right? Seven plus, I got one, two, maybe three, I don't know, however you're feeling, okay? Three plays, okay? Then I got third and fourth, one to, one to two, because my guy likes to go for it, okay? I'm gonna have one, one or two plays there, okay? Then down here, it's red zone, and it's high, mid, low. One or two plays in each one of those, okay? now. A lot of these 25 plays fall in over here, okay? Now, there's going to be a handful of plays. So if I was to tell you total number of plays that get repped in a week, it might, be, might go up to, to 30, 28, 32 plays because there's going to be, like I run, a, I run a Texas play on a red, low red zone. Every week I run it. It goes in, okay? But that's the only place I, I ever call it is down there. There's only a couple of those. So as the game goes, as I've, during the week, as I'm practicing, I'm practicing this as six play, six plays, six plays. I know it doesn't add to 25. Six plays, all right? And, and I'm putting these down kind of how I believe I would call them in a game because I'm trying to, you know, set stuff up. And I'll be honest with you, I got it on, just typed on a sheet of paper, and if I call the first one, I put a check on it. I call a second one, I put a check on it. Oh, it's third and two? Shit, I'm calling that. All right? Oh, back to first and ten? I'm calling that. Because like Coach says, it's just freaking call a play, man. <laughs> you know? Now maybe I hit this one, and this is a lot of 21-12 of personnel little package in those six plays. So as I practice them during the week, the kids practice them that way all week. Okay? When I'm in my 10 and 20 mode, here's the six plays. Mm -hmm. So, Coach, by Monday at 2 o'clock, you're not adding any more plays during the week, and in fact, you might take some off if you don't like how they look. Yeah, what I do when I start doing this with Phillip Rivers is, is that this goes, I got, you know, my, I got a board that's just written like, the board's written like that, and, all right, and I, I'll send the receiver guys, all right, you know, you can, hey, receiver guys, go freaking, you know, what do you like on third and two to six, third and seven in the red zone, O-line running back guys, all right, what runs you like? Running back coach, what screens do you like? Okay, hey coach, I want green tear Chevron Linda this week. Okay, or, or, or flex left, F goes, Zorro odd rocket. Okay, well, when I go to Pat goes, the team takeoff, those are the ones I'm working that week. All right, so that's all on, on, a, on a sheet of paper. And as, what was your question? Yeah, if you go through the week, then you might take some off. Oh. Yeah, so what happens is, all right, is then I have the guys, I have my quarterback come in on Wednesday, and he ranks them, <coughs> one through ten, okay? So, like, he comes in, and he goes, freaking ten, man, I love that. He, they usually do because we run that the most, all right? And it might be, oh, that's an eight. Oh, that's a ten. I like that. That's a seven, all right? We get down here, and he goes, that's a four, okay? Okay, that one's out. All right. Once they're out, there ain't nothing coming back in. All right. One, one thing that I've learned from you guys is that if you can't complete the sucker in practice, you sure as heck can't complete it on Friday night. You know, so if I, you know, if we get to Wednesday.
today, and we're not completing Mercedes. Don't call it. I'm not calling it. You know, my kids have proven we're not good at it that week. We might have we might have just knocked it dead the week before. My kids are, you know, we can run F Shack or something this week, so and we're just killing that. Well, Mercedes out, F Shack, you're in. Coach, so the one through ten in ranking is specifically uh, we think we got it against these guys, or no? That's just that's just my little thing that I know what my quarterback really feels good about. It, okay, and and really, I'm keeping most of it in, but there's always a couple plays where he doesn't <coughs> feel good about the play. All right, you know, and then sometimes these some bitches they'll put tens on every one of them. You know, but I say just be honest, man. If you don't like the play, don't make me call it. All right, because I like it, don't mean it's a good play. Because guess what? I don't have to read it. I don't have to throw it. You do. Okay, or if kids are screwing stuff up, like the sweep the corners day, you know, like just like coach says, you know, you keep saying, well, no, it's a great concept. This some bitch is going to work and you ain't completed it once all week in practice. Chances are you ain't going to complete it in the game. All right. So it goes out. Thursday night, we have a team dinner every Thursday night and we call 32 to 6 is our go get it down because that's when you got to move the chain. I actually let my quarterback look on the sheet and he pulled out the four plays he wanted for third and two to six. These are the ones I know I can go get us a first down coach. And he put those in himself. Then, then one other thing in this, in this whole deal is, and I started this middle of the year and I really liked it, all right, is that he knew that there was two play calls, okay? So we had two play calls and that's what, that's kind of what you talk about Chip. There's really only two of those pictures on all those boards that mean anything, okay? And that's, we're kind of the same way, all right? The rest is just like you said on your board, just dummy stuff, all right? So we had what we called two play calls, speed, all right, and uh, nitro, okay? So that starts from like install one. So in other words, he would know the, um, we would hold the board up and the quarterback would look and he'd see a picture of, of some hot model or something he knew it was a two play call, okay? And the two play call that week may be green tear Zorro, Green fast, Zorro. Or it might be green tear Zorro 90. Go to 90 or whatever. So he knew right now he didn't have to look for the signal. All right? First and second down, it was two plays right here. All right? Boom, just call him. Quarterback, you don't need to look over at me and tell me because I was going to tell you to call that son of a bitch anyway. All right? So he just knew, hey, he's a two player. Hey, go green. All right? Run Zorro with tear. Go green. Run Zorro with fast. And he look and say, okay, gotcha. Boom. Green tear. Green, 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 green. Zorro out, Zorro out, tear, comment. Said hike, bam, blue, blue. And you know, you know, by hash, tell them, or shit, just tell them it's always green. I don't care if it's in the boundary or not, okay? Hey, green, 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 green. Fast, 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 fast. Zorro even, comment. Ready, said hike. And that's what he's talking about. That's how you play, that's how you can play fast. If you ever got a nitro call, all right? Nitro call meant run the same play as fast as you can that I just called. Dual right, 90, dual right, 90. You just completed the hitch, all right? Nitro, 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 nitro. Ready, set hike. Throw that son of a bitch again. Okay, or you just threw X on, okay? Speed was game week specific, okay? Like against uh, Arizona State. And it was kind of something a little bit out of ordinary for us. Okay, so I didn't have to think up a new formation and get the guys to learn, all right, I'm going to call it a different name. So speed was, here's trio. Well, they love to bring this guy free off there. So he would just come up, and no matter what personnel we were in, all right, he'd go, speed right, speed right. Okay, he would line up there. We would do that. He would arc, all right. He would block, he would block, he'd run a hitch, okay? So that was speed right. I'm just giving an example. It could, next week it could be something else. But they always, I always had like one play where we could speed. I ran six times in a row, all right? Speed, 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 ready, said hike. One time he took it, safety's here, Will's there, Mike's there, Sam there, threw the hitch, okay? Came back next time, he ran outside with that, we handed it off. All right, next time he closed, he did that, he pulled it and he ran, okay? So it's just one play that had like, it'd be like a bone team calling, you know, their base, base, yeah, their base, it's triple option. It's a triple option play, 
that you got answers for everything, and the kids just don't line up at speed that week. All right, speed the wide nose, he lines up in the wing right here. I arc, okay, or maybe it's arc to vertical, arc to vertical. It's 91 with Zorro and a hitch. That's speed, okay. If it was 12 personnel happened to be in the game, and, and I went speed, speed, speed. Well, the only, only way we're getting in 12 personnel this week, all right, two tights, is Tex, all right? If I said speed, 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 okay, makes sense. It's just the same, same play. But that's the only way that it would get worked all that week, all right? There you go. Now, 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 it was zero. Everyone ran the ball, zero key two. Then we had another one that was called remix. Remix was run the same play again. We just yelled remix, 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 and played again. Third one was flip flop. We used to say flip flop, flip flop. Same play, flip the play. Same play, go the other way. So we had three automatic calls that said, So if you're going to do that, three. you better only have like six plays that you've got on the board. That's what we had. We had two running plays yeah. in like four. We have two screens, two pass concepts, two running Like plays. Coach Jones says, if you want to do that, you better not have 100 freaking plays in the play, in the play call because I can't call them. We have six plays probably during the week we call. Yeah, it, it, to me, green and blue, and it depends on your personnel. Like now, if you've got two like really good running backs that can catch the ball, you know, do all that stuff, okay, I'll let them switch, you know, and they know I'm always playing, I'm always the guy on the tear motion, or I'm always this, or, you know, it's really personnel driven. But like when I, you first start, to me, green is this guy. That lined up there, so we just bring. You just want to bring them back in. So to me, that's our F. Okay, that's our slot receiver. That's a running back. All right, that he's a second team running back maybe. All right, he's a really good player, but you never get him on the field, right? Because this cat's really good. Okay, so in twenty, that's usually that guy. You're talking Franklin's back. You were exactly. So like for us, this was Jonathan Franklin, and that was like Figgy. Big Pen, Jordan James, Stephen Manfro. Okay, now Stephen Manfro, all right, and Jordan could do it, but he didn't want to do it. He he always saw himself as just a running back. Stephen Manfro was also starting to slot for us, so I could be with, with when Steve was in the game, I could jump between ten and twenty, ten and twenty, and no, nobody had to come off the field or come on the field. Okay, so it's so strictly personnel. What type of guys you got? Okay, if you only have one tailback in twenty. Then, then this guy was still my slot receiver. Okay, I'm always going to build him. Hey, you're always going to the Zorro call or the Detroit call or the Shark call. So if it was Shark odd, my tail, Jonathan would line up there, and Manfro would be the fast guy or the tear guy. Okay, but like Coach keeps saying, the kids they you only got 20 plays you work all week. They already know when he goes green, 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 Shark. Shit, Jonathan knows he's walking. He's getting this freaking Shark. He knows where he's going, right? Steven knows, hey, I'm going to be the fast guy. All right, let's go. Never. Coach, what did you say? Defense is just trying to get their ass in line. It's like I always used to worry about this. If you watch us on film, all right, stand up, Coach. If we were in 20 personnel and he was the T and I was the F, we're going that way, all right? Because I always bitch at my guys. Guys, kind of even just to make me happy, just kind of make me look like all right, that you don't show who's going to go and tear in fast motion. But if you watch on film, sometimes he's there and he knows I got to go fast. That son of a bitch is like this deep, you know. I said, scoot up a little bit at least, you know, because they know they got to go. All right. Or he's getting a Zorro and I'm not. He cheats in and I'm out wide. You know, I used to worry about, you know, making it look, you know, guys line up in the B gap, bitch, it's overrated. And, and yeah, they don't have, they're not going back, they're going. Now, if you've got a quarterback that's doing this, green, 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 green. 
Green 80. Green 80. ID 50, 52 is the mic. 52 is the mic. All right. Hey, watch the corner cat. Green 80. Green 80. All right. Now the defensive linebackers are going. Here comes Zorro. Look at their alignments. You know, because that's what defensive guys love, right? They tend to see your alignments with the backs here. He's offset. He's six yards deep. He's four yards deep. Shit. Our guys are just freaking, they're like just trying to line up. Yeah. Every team we talked to, they said we're just, we're, I, when I talked to the coaches after the game, they're like, we didn't know what you were doing. Because we thought every time you motioned, you were going to, you're going to throw that swing. But then we were running, you know, Rose and Linda the other way. Right. And we hadn't done it for two quarters in the third quarter. Now we're, we're running key screens for the first half. Now we're running Rose and Linda in the third quarter. They never knew what we were doing. Formation question. X and D, are they flipping sides on? No. Is Y always on? If you were a purist, you'd say yes. But my guys are all run specific, I mean, all play specific. So they get to, they get to, if you like, watch us on film, okay? And same thing. You know, everybody's like, well, we know when the F's inside. I mean, I even get to where my Y I had this, week, this year was 6'8". Yeah, he's not a bubble key three guy. He's a Honda caddy guy. Throw it up in the air, I'll jump everybody, okay? So if I ever got in trio, all right, and I called Detroit 95, and that's the F, and I called Detroit 95, two things would happen. He understood the play enough to know this. Coach, when are they going to throw me the ball again? Joe, they're going to throw you the ball when the Mike linebacker can't cover you, all right? So you know what he starts doing? <laughs> All right? And if you watch it on film, it does. I mean, at first it was like, okay, you line up, you set the split, you, you, you know, you take your split, you split the difference. As soon as he saw five and he knew it was Detroit, he's like, yeah, throw me the freaking ball out here, okay? All right? If we called Zorro and say I tagged it with Shark or with Key 3, well, Joe knew... Well, I'm a, I ain't getting a freaking ball. So he'd, tell, he'd say, Devin, boom. He'd walk out because I'd rather have him blocking and me throwing it to Devin Fuller, who's a 10, 700 meter guy. Okay? So to say is, is the kids, that's the, oh, to me it was the ownership. They knew their strengths, they knew their weaknesses. Hey, get, let's get the best guys in the right spot. So you go, okay, well, every time they put F right there, you know, they know this is going to happen. All right, you know what? I did stop worrying about it because we're going so fast. Well, you got to go into knowing your personnel as your players. As, as a coach, a lot of coaches tend to have a problem on identifying the player and matching him with the position. So with stuff like this here with me, I, I already know. I know what this kid can do. I know where he goes. I know where his tendency is. If he's a weenie, if he's not, if he can get it, let him go, man. So once you play with it in practice, then you'll know. So like you said, when the guy cheated out, he already knows. So he knew that he was cheating out. So it ain't a problem because he knows he wants the football. So what we have a problem is a lot of times is judging talent. Sometimes we don't judge talent real well. And that's a big plus. It can hurt you and it can help you. And uh, some people say, well, that kid ain't nothing. Well, let's work with him and see. Even if it's on the side in the park or whatever, it might not be in this practice where you're running in a tempo or whatever. You have to take a chance. He might get something out of this guy better than I can. Sure. Like you said, hey. you, your coaches come in and tell you what they like, and then if you start building, you got to trust that coach. Yeah. You know, and, so and what he says is exactly right, because this happens to us all the time is, is we, we play so fast, you got that X receiver that the receiver coach thinks can't play. But out of necessity, he has to take reps in practice because that guy can't run them all. He gets freaking tired, all right? He just ran three caddies in a row, and he ran a go route. Well, you got to put – and this guy's like, he's coming back, all right? You've got to put somebody in there just so the other ten guys can still practice in your quarterback. And what happens is the year goes on, this guy starts to become a pretty – this guy, you say, oh, shit, I can play with that guy, all right? And all of a sudden, he turns into be maybe a pretty good player for you. I found a lot of guys that way. You're like, you have that mindset of he can't play. You never gave him a chance to prove to you he can't play. All right, let him go play, even if it is to run go routes or whatever. Right, 
No, most most of my conceptional, you know, what do we call five step drop stuff, but you're in a gun, it's really not five step drops is, is that Y knows caddy is his play, all right? Caddy, all right? He's running Y cross, okay? F knows when he sees caddy, he's always running a grab route. So if you were in dual, okay? So these two guys, if you were in dual, he knows I'm running the grab, okay? If you're in trio, he knows I'm running the grab, okay? If you're in the backfield, he knows he's check swing. So that's all he has to learn. If he hears the word caddy, as long as he's lined up in the formation that we told him to, all right, all he knows is I'm on the line of scrimmage, I run grab. If I'm in the backfield, I run swing, okay? Why, whether it's green, trio right, or it's blue, trio left, or dual, he's always running the caddy. So this is the old how mummy, Raymond Berry thing about let this guy always run the same. Don't, don't make eight guys be good at this. Just get two guys really good at it, and they just always run it because they'll get really good at it, okay? You outside guys, well, I may be the X, but I'm always on the left. I'm always on the right. If you see caddy, all you got to know, am I to the Y or away from the Y, okay? If I'm to the Y, I run post curl. If I'm away from the Y, I run go, okay? So if it was right, he you know, oh, shit, Y's on my side, post curl, I run go. So that as soon as they see caddy, man, they don't even, they just know. Do it right, do it right. And I'm on the left side, I'm the receiver. Do it right, do it right. Hey, caddy, caddy. Oh, shit, I got a go route. All right? Do it left, do it left. Caddy, caddy, caddy. Oh, I got post curl. All right? You can do it either way. We're F shack team. We run, we run, you know, and I've done, I've done it before, you know, where you want to, you know, you can want to run Z Shack, Y Shack, all that kind of stuff. I'll game plan that sometimes, but the base way they learn it is F, you're a Shack guy. Y, you're a lot, you're the basic guy. So there's F Shack. Okay? That's probably the base way we run it. Now I'll get in three by one and run Daytona and tell X, you run the Shack. You know, something like that. But so, but they, but that's that play gets called all the time. Trio right, that's the X Shack route. So the last question on that line is the Mercedes. How much do you change who's doing that? Never. So the same two guys. Y always sets the mesh. X you always work off the mesh. So if I was to call Mercedes, wherever, just like Caddy, Mercedes, he knows you're setting the mesh. Find grass, take grass. X, all right. Kind of like Exxon, right? Exxon, you know you're always finding the mesh. mesh so those guys are always meshing on the mesh. Now, put whatever formation you want, okay? Z, you always know you're running circle route, circus route, Seattle, okay? F, if you're on the ball, run basic. If you're off the ball, okay? If you're off the ball, run swing. So if I run out of duel, <coughs> Run basic. If I'm in a trio, run basic. If I'm in blue and green, run swing. So that's all, that's all that kid needs to know. Because I want it to be the same for these guys and the quarterback. Because the quarterback's progression is going to be the same way. One, two, three, alert. Okay? Those are three base concepts for us. Of throwing. I'm going to say it's this. It's... It's caddy. The ones you're going to see us the most is going to be caddy, F Shack, Mercedes. And I'm like him. Mercedes is really game specific. Some weeks it looks great. Some weeks it works crap. Some weeks I just do it in the red zone because they're a big man team. You know, it's a little bit more situational. But, it, but, it's, but it's a base play for us. So I said F Shack, caddy, Mercedes, Daytona. Those are the four. Okay? Now... X 95, 91, 93, X on Chevron, okay? To me, that's all my ball control quick game. Those are the plays that get attached to all the runs, okay? So, like, I, I, once I teach Chevron or my quick game, okay, and I'm running Shark, okay, I'll decide that week, hey, hey, Brett, all right, we're going to go tear and run shark to the boundary because they're always setting the shade over here in 20, okay? In trio, 
they're always set in the shade to the back. In the three and the five. Well, I'm not a, I don't love the shark right there. I'd rather run Zorro. But in 20, all right, they're always setting the shade to the boundary. Okay? So that's what my line coach should have told me. He said, bro, we're going to run. I want to run shark this week, but I, wanna, I only want to run it in 20 personnel because I got a great shot of getting the shade into the boundary. All right? I don't want to run it out of trio this week. Okay? All right? Now you decide, what are they playing out here? Are they a split safety team or are they a post safety team? Like I said, when I watch them, that's all I need to know. Are you split safety, post safety? Where do you put your three? Are you an odd front, all right? And where's your pressure? What's your two base pressures? That's all I need to know, okay? So now I'll decide, okay, well, the, the, he wants to run shark <laughs> over here, all right? So I'm gonna go tear motion and I'm gonna build me a three-man game over there to control this guy, okay? Well, they're a cover two team, so I'm doing freaking Chevron. If he runs, throw it to the snag, okay? All right, hey, they're, they're a three deep team, they're a post safety team. Well, then screw that, I'm throwing 95 stick, okay? Because now the strong safety's gonna bump out and now or the Sam's got to get there, you know what I mean? So that's, that's to me, the, the fun part of the deal. You're just kind of fitting the pieces together. I got a question along with you. just said 95 home for a good game. When you're signaling that in, how do you signal in for me? Do you say, hey, we're going to go to the door, 95? You got it. So you can signal for me right now. Yeah. You can, you, gotta, you can get a job at my place <laughs> as a signal guy. Right. Hey, Zorro, five. Zorro, five. Hey, give me a hitch. Or... Or run at you. Yeah, he just he go like this, trio. All right, and then you go like this. Hey, bang, 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 bang. hang loose the guy. Hang, hang, hang loose. So he look over here at X and he go, hey, hang loose, fade. Okay, or hey, give me a hitch. You know, and and and, and usually Brett, he like coach keeps saying, they, he freaking knows what I want. You know, I give him trio sharp. All right, that week, all week I've been throwing, running Trio Shark 95 to him, okay? He sees Trio right, all right, like this. He already, as soon as he says, he goes, Trio right, Trio right, he goes, Shark odd, Shark odd, Shark odd, okay? And that's about how he signals it. I don't know, is that how you guys, he's just. My second, second year, we, um, this past year, my, my quarterback, he didn't need me. Yeah. And he's like, dude, I got, I got this, man. Yeah. I know what which you is want. Good, which yeah. is good. I mean, it makes your job easy, man. You just call and plays. Coach, can you just finish up the practice schedule and then we'll take a break? Okay. Okay, so let's, yeah. All right, so we, everybody's good on all the patent, you know, how, how do you guys do your patent doing all that stuff like that too? Every day. Every day. Never changes, does it? I mean, I think that's, that's a key, that's, that's a key, I think, to it. Coach, I mean, I promise you, that? I think Coach right there could call his group of receivers, pick up a cell phone, call Daniel, and you could say, hey, go out and start practice and go with Pat and go, and they go through everything you want to go through, right? And you say, I'm at the freaking blackjack table, make sure it works right, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Coach, real quick, I'm sorry, you guys go five minute Pat and go every day or you go a little bit longer? Say that one more time. You go Pat and go five minutes every day or you go a little bit longer? We go, we go, we go ten. Okay. You know, we our, our practice schedule changes a little bit based on the day of the week. You know, we'll, we'll shorten a period, we'll lengthen a period, you know, based on what day it is, and a little bit of, you know, a little bit of who we're playing to. You know, I mean, we're, we're pretty flexible in regards to that, but, you know, some of that stuff's pretty, pretty regimented. Well, Wednesday is more about like five minutes or so. Here. Yeah. Well, ours is actually 20 minutes. Oh, that whole process is, is 20 minutes. Oh, you're right. I was thinking team takeoff. Right? Team takeoff, yeah. Let's see if I got it on here. Okay, so here, here's practice, our practice, all right? This is kind of what we talked about, you know. Offensive line, <coughs> practice the team runs, script them. That's that part when he's down there working by himself. And, okay, install, game plan, run. So give me the game plan runs. 
all right? I let my coaches talk as much as I can to the group, all right? I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to make, you know, I want to hear one voice, but I think my coach, part of my job is for my running back coach and my old line coach and all that to prepare to be a coordinator and to be, you know, to be in front of guys and be able to present things, all right? And they can, and, and they hear it, and I get to hear, all right? I, I just like a lot of, I want everybody involved, okay? Um, anyway, so that's all that. There's how it would be, 15 minutes, pat and go, quick game, snag, mesh, hot swing, wraps on air, the ones we talked about, team run, okay? The first day is always competition Tuesday, okay? Skelly, as I script these things, okay? So I've pulled this up to show you this, okay? So here's a typical, our team, all right, our 20, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 play of, of this. This is probably, like I showed you that one through 25 playlist, that's probably first play of the game, second play of the game, first, third down, third play of the game, four, and that's the one through 25, all right? And this is like all out of 10, so that's like I talked about. This was this 10 package, all right? 10 package right there that what I'm gonna be calling kind of in my, my brain, I'm gonna run the draw, all right? I'm gonna wanna go hustle and throw the caddy, and I wanna run the Tampa. All right, and my first third down that week was going to be dual tear 95 93. Okay, so that was probably the first one right here. 32 and 6 right there. So as I script it, okay, like on Tuesday, this never changes. Hash, field, down and distance. Okay, so I just plug it in. Okay, here's the second. You can see, all right, 12. And I want to start to work on my 12, you know, whatever it was, on my second possession of the game. Okay, third possession of the game. My 10 and 20, this was with man throw in the game. I was going 10, 20, 20, 10, you know, third down, third and eight. That was my, that was what I was gonna call, that was probably on third and eight. That was probably the first one right here. Blue free Honda, okay? So that was probably the first one. So as a play caller, I'm trying to practice calling the plays during the week also. So I'm not just like writing it down. I'm, I'm, I've watched the film, I'm saying, okay, look, I'm gonna start with draw. Next thing I want to do is I'm going to take a shot on the second play of the game. All right, so that's what that was. All right, oh, I got the third down because I made, you know, I, I ran the draw and made seven yards. Say this one was incomplete. I'm at third and three. That's my first call. Hey, next made first down, I want to go caddy, and I want to show, you know, play action, caddy, whatever, okay? So that's kind of how I call the game or I script the game each week or script the practices each week. What does that rule two, rule three, what does that rule mean to you? This right here is the first team, that's the second team, that's the first team, oh. that's the second team, that's the first team, that's the second team. Okay? And I, I, I don't know, I think that, Coach Moore put those on there. He likes to know what, what role are you on? Uh, I'm on rule three, Coach. Oh, okay. Well, you got, you got to be like, plays of five, like Drew Gibbs did, he did in roles of sections of six. So rule one was the first team. Six, roll two was the second. So he'd go down six plays, back six plays with his first team. Then the second team would go down six plays, back six plays. Then his first team would go down six, back six, that's it. And then his team's done. And, and if you look at this, usually these are, the muddle was something I was working on, so I was just kind of practicing that. But usually these are the same plays as those. Because my second group is watching, all right? Because remember, my starting receiver the second team receiver may be in right here because I just sent freaking my X on two deltas, you know? So the backup X is playing right here. So, so really it's like two groups, but the receivers are just running these plays. And it's usually the same. So my second line and those guys can be on the sideline watching because they know they're going to go in and run the same stuff that the first team just did. Okay? And Drew would write it up so that some plays, you know, the same, you know, how you have them on the left hash, on the right hash, and then he's just checking it off of it as they go down. He's hoping he hits all the hashes in those 24 plays, but sometimes he would, sometimes he wouldn't. But he's yeah, keeping but, track of and what, what he's, hash he was working What on. he's doing different is, is wherever the ball ends up is the ball gets spotted. Exactly. See, I, I got enough manager guys. They've got freaking 80 guys out there running around their you know, equipment guys and all that. So I go ahead so I make sure I get the hashes I want. I go ahead and I script it, all right, yeah. my hash marks. Um, and then that's basically like there's, they're all, all about the same, all right? So there's team run, that's always versus the defense, 
okay? Team run. If the defensive guy doesn't want to do it, it's my, my team run. I'll script it. Here's your co competitive. It may be today was red zone one-on-one -on -one versus DBs. It might be uh, one day it might be uh, keys and locks versus DBs. We'll put out they'll put, the DB coach. Me will put out a corner and a safety, you know, and we'll lock him and we'll key him and they go after it, all right? Um, this would be a service period. So this is my uh, 25 plays you just watched on. We're getting it done in 15 minutes, okay? So that's first Nebraska. Skelly, we always go against, I love to go against the defense. I never go against a, a scout team Skelly, all right? Because I really, because we're a progression team, so I really don't give a shit what coverage you're in, all right? If, if we're playing a big two team, all right, and, and, and Skelly, I'm getting all quarter, quarter, half, and post safety, that's fine because we're pure progression, all right? Doesn't matter. We're going one, two, three. Bam, whatever. He's just there. We're just seeing it. And then it's always the third down, so that's always competitive. Then another service period, all right? So there's two service periods. And then we always, Coach Moore, and I love it, we always finish practice with some sort of a, a one on a first. And I know it's hard in high school because some of your guys are probably both ways, but it's something competitive. Here's pressures. That's for the defense. Nickel pressures. I don't even know what the hell that means, all right? But they're going to pressure me. Their pressures, not who we're playing, all right? The next day it might be red zone. The next day it might be coach may come in and say, hey, we're going to go eight plays, freaking they're all third and tens. I'm like, bro, come on, all right? And then he's like, defense kicked your ass today. You know, he didn't make, we only made one of them. Yeah, third and ten, right? Coach, okay. let's hook up. Hookup is a period that he likes, and I like it too. Where is he at? Uh, right here. Okay, that's that one-on-one -on -one period. So it means we're hooking up with the defense. So, like, Meat knows he's always hooking up with the, with the receiver coach. The running back coach knows he's always hooking up with the linebacker coach. O-line coach knows he's hooking up with the D-line. All right? And then they kind of, whatever their schedule is. Yeah, it's competition. He may be red zone one-on-one. -on -one. It may be blocking. Maybe meeting yards decide, hey, let's do some stock block drills. You know, whatever. It's just hooked up. Good on good. We're playing. Okay. Uh, like, see here, team compete on this one was third down, co third down coverage for them. So that's kind of the whole deal. Let's see if there's anything else in there that's good. You guys know the 12% rule, right? It's good stuff. Okay. Um, <coughs> Like I said, this is, I mean, well, I want them to win the game during the week, all right? Then just freaking go let them have fun and play on Friday, Saturday, all right? Don't bitch at them. Play fast. Let them have fun, okay? Um, so all, all the stuff we've been talking about. I don't think there's anything else in here. This is what I was telling you, all right? I'm going to find that thing, okay? Coach does a great job with this stuff, man. He's an awesome motivator. But if you can see, this is that same picture of the Army guys. So he took it, all right, and this was, the, the whole thing was banned, you know, and these were the things that we always, you know, that he tries to sell to them every day. I try to sell to them, all right? Football character, accountability, competitive greatness, team ego, extreme toughness. So that was the filter. So if you did not develop those things or have those things, you were filtered out of the program, all right? And your kids will sell that harder than you will sell it. They'll become demanding on their, on their teammates. When they start bitching at the guy because you ain't bursting or you ain't finishing or you ain't getting a signal, that's when all of a sudden, all right, they're either gone or they'll learn to do it. See, there's directional. So there's just motions. All this stuff's going to get up next week. Uh, this right there, so you don't have to sit listen to my ass talk about it. It'll all be up there. No. Some get screwed up. When's that getting fixed? Other than outside of film, you know, when are you able to coach that stuff other than on you know the arm fly stuff? Okay, so we used to do this, all right? And we and I don't know, this is like during the season, so we kind of got away from it, all right? But the old line guy would stand back or whatever, or and I had this, and I never really paid attention to it, all right? But they would mark things that they did wrong off the script. So maybe three things got blocked wrong, okay? So he either knew post-practice. We used to do what we call a team teach. We do it during two-a-days. We don't really do it during the season. So after every 
20 play team, balls to the wall, there was a 10 minute rest. It usually ended up being seven minutes. Where, you know, it's hot, we're in San Bernardino, you, want, you know, you want to be smart, right? I still want my guys fresh so they can go full speed, so let's rest them a little bit. And that was always, all right, take your hats off, and, you know, you'd mark, hey, look at guys, we fucked up these three things, okay? You line them up, a little walk through, hey, you got to step this way or on this motion, make sure you snap it there. We'd walk through it, but we never wanted to jeopardize our tempo to repeat stuff, so it never did, we'd never do. All right, so it was up to your the coach. All right, at some point, all right, to fix the problem. It might be the next day at film. It might be during biology class. Okay, whenever. All right, but each coach would kind of like, man, I need to talk to my guys about this. They ain't doing that right. Anything else? We'll take a little break. Yeah. Can you do that again, Shark? Can you coach? Shark? Yeah. Well, we're gonna do Shark and Giants in the next one. Yeah, okay. they begin to run past combos, and that's the big, that's the big one. Everyone wants to see Sharp and Giants go. Okay. Anything else on practice? All right, good. You want to take 15 minutes, Coach? Yeah, that'd be good. All right, 15 minutes. Thanks, guys. What's wrong with your break for lunch?